all through the league, coaches were dreaming of Week 16. The uniforms were hung in the lockers with care in hopes that a playoff spot soon would be there. A strong-armed quarterback with a release so quick and dashing receivers with hands that stick. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a 260-pound back dressed in full gear. With tenacious defensemen so aggressive and quick, the matchup is even, so take your pick. They whistle and shout and call out their names. Now Shula, now Marino, now Clayton and Smith. On Marty, on Derek, on Christian and Mike. The playoffs are scrambled. We'll try to explain, but happy Christmas to all. And now, on with the game. NBC Sports presents the National Football League. Today, it's the Kansas City Chiefs versus the Miami Dolphins. The bitter cold that has gripped much of the nation has reached South Florida. It's a sunny afternoon in Miami, but game time temperatures in the 30s with a 20 to 35 mile an hour wind swirling through Joe Robbie Stadium. The Chiefs and the Dolphins still alive for the playoffs, but just barely. Here's the situation. The Chiefs must win this game against the Dolphins and then hope for losses by Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, and the Raiders. Same situation for the Dolphins. They must beat Kansas City and then hope for a loss by each of the other four AFC wildcard contenders. Hello, everyone. Happy holiday season. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath ready to bring you the final regular season game of the 1989 season. The Chiefs and the Dolphins much improved over a year ago, and they've done it with contrasting styles. Kansas City, a ball control team. Big, powerful running back in Christian Okoye from Nigeria. He's truly a nightmare to the defenses. Now, he weighs 260 pounds. He leads the whole league in rushing with 1,382. And what he's done is helped out Kansas City's passing game with their play-action style attack. And speaking of the passing game, the Dolphins like to go to the air with one of the best of all time, Dan Marino. Although his stats this year are a little down from normal. His stats are down. Dan hasn't had a good year. He missed open receivers last week against Indianapolis. He's going to be hard-pressed to get his passing game going because he's going against the second-ranked pass defense in the entire NFL and probably the best cornerback in the league in Albert Lewis. Marty Schottenheimer completing his first year as the Kansas City coach. And the Chiefs do kick off. Nick Lowry sends the kick deep through the end zone and out for a touchback. And the Miami Dolphins will begin the game. And here is a look at the Miami starting offensive unit. Veterans Foster and Lee lead that Dolphin offensive line. Marino leads the league in interceptions with 21. He has not had a touchdown pass in the last two games. Still, he has thrown for over 3,600 yards. Edmonds uh, has been named with the Pro Bowl. Mark Logan gets the start. In the Miami passing set, Brown and Banks are in with four wide receivers, and Jensen enters the backfield. First down for Marino and company at their own 20-yard line. Play action pass. Marino completes it for a first down. Making the catch is Farrell Edmonds, who is the tight end heading to the 1989 Pro Bowl. Here's a look now at the Kansas City defense, ranked number one in the AFC. Sally Amua has been a force at nose tackle. The rookie Thomas will be in the Pro Bowl starter. He's had 10 sacks. The offense is starting to pay some special attention to him. Lewis may be the best cornerback in football. He and Ross going to the Pro Bowl. In the Chiefs' nickel, Petrie, Copeland, and Pearson all in for extra defensive backs. First down play to give to Sammy Smith, the rookie from Florida State. And he rambles ahead to the 45-yard line. 15-yard gain as the Dolphins go to the ground for a first down. Walker Lee Ashley making the stop for the Chiefs. Well, this is somewhat of the problem that Kansas City's defense had last week, trying to stop San Diego's rushing attack at Marion Butts. Here, Sammy Smith shows what kind of outs outside speed he has because the hole was cut off actually in the middle and he just jumped it outside and got wide for a good game from the 45 yard line the Dolphins with another first down this is the opening drive of the game it began at the Miami 20 Marino with his second pass attempt coming up scrambling and then completing and it's dropped incomplete intended for Sammy Smith he had it in his hands and dropped it well, Marino only sent three receivers out that time. He kept everyone else in to block. I guess they do respect the rush of Kansas City somewhat. You see that wall up in front of Marino? There are seven guys in there trying to protect him, and he still got flushed out of the pocket and had to come to a short receiver. 
Good coverage downfield. Miami sends Jensen into the game, replacing Sammy Smith. Second and ten. Flags down. Looks like somebody from the Dolphins jumped offside. Might have been Galbraith, the right guard, Harry Galbraith. Illegal procedure, the signal by Johnny Greer, today's referee. Yes, well, 62 offense. Second down. Well, it's right over here on the right side of this line. He's going to shoot off the line of scrimmage before the ball is snapped which is going to cause a minor problem for this Dolphin offense. You know, that's a pretty good jump on that nose tackle, though. That you could block him that way. Clayton to the right, Duper to the left on second and 15. Marino steps up and delivers a strike, complete for close to a first down, probably enough, as Jensen makes the catch for 15 yards. Right at the first down marker, Lloyd Burris making the stop. Burris starting at free safety today, replacing the great Duran Cherry, who's been put on injured reserve. Well, Jensen missed the do it on the extreme left side of your screen, number 11. He's going to cut across the middle there, and he's going to outrun Lloyd Burris, number 34, the safety. Jensen missed the do it all. He's out in the field on every special teams event as well as handling some draw play duties and catching everything that's thrown in his direction. Number two receiver, that was, you see, was his 55th reception of 1989. Just enough for the first down. Sammy Smith back in the lineup, tries to get to the outside and gets only a couple of yards before that Kansas City pursuit reaches in. Lloyd Burris was the man that came up from this free safety spot to make the tackle. You know, we saw that Kansas City struggled early on in the year, Tom, and so often we hear that these players are trying to learn a new system when they get new coaches. You know, another thing, the coaches have to learn the players, and that's what's happened with Kansas City. They've improved drastically because Coach Schottenheimer and his staff learned their personnel. They know what they can do better now, so they're performing better. Second and seven for Miami. Jensen back in for Smith. This will be a handoff to Mark Logan, his first carry of the game, and it nets very little, if any. Chris Martin, the outside linebacker of the Chiefs, came up to start, stop Mark Logan, who has been the number three rusher on this Miami team, despite being on injured reserve for a good six weeks or so. Well, you know, the first play of the game, Sammy Smith jumped outside and got a good gainer. I don't think we're going to see the Dolphins run the ball on this Chiefs defense today not consistently the Dolphins are going to have to go with Marino throwing the ball deeper intermediate range he's going to get man-to-man -man coverage so we'll be seeing a lot of balls uh, toward Clayton and toward Duper we should anyway Miami rushing attack 27th in the NFL netting only 84 yards a game so Marino will pass flag down as he completes it to the 30 yard line Mark Clayton makes the reception, then J.C. Pearson takes him down, but there is a penalty marker on the play. The It'll key for Marino, I'm sorry, Tom, is, is to get the pass protection. He's going to have to have pass protection because Kevin Ross back there in the secondary and Lewis is so good at covering. Hey. Illegal motion, 82 offense, still third down. Andre Brown is guilty of the illegal motion, which wipes out a 13-yard gain and sets the ball back to the 48-yard line. Well, that drives a coach nuts. You know, when your wide receivers jump off sides or they get going in motion a little bit earlier toward the line of scrimmage. Now, Andre Brown's going to lean toward the line of scrimmage. You see, he can't be leaning toward it. He has to be going parallel to the line of scrimmage, and that's why he got the penalty. He was leaning into the line. Third and 13, Miami in the shotgun. Their flush formation with four wide receivers. sideline flag down intended for Mark Duper but Kevin Ross interfered with him kept him from getting to the football no I think we're going to see that called on Duper this time Tom which could be construed as a smart play by Duper Dup if it is indeed on him it is and uh, he was really covered Ross had him beaten or covered all over the place Duper doesn't appear to be a hundred percent to me I know he hasn't been working but he just Office doesn't 
touchdown! He's just not his normal quick self coming out of those breaks. Duper had a groin injury. He suffered it against New England, was inactive against the Colts last week. He did start today, but as you pointed out, Joe, uh, apparently not 100%, and that was offensive interference declined, and Miami will have to punt. There's Roby, Reggie Roby, who will be going to the Pro Bowl. Worthen is deep for Kansas City. Worthen takes it at the 15-yard line, retreats, and is taken down at the 10. Good coverage by the Miami special teams. A 33-yard punt with Greg Clark quickly downfield to make the Miami tackle. So the Kansas City Chiefs will have the ball for the first time. Miami punting in a scoreless first quarter. for our tree at your store and have a happy holiday. Another Pontiac First is ready for delivery. The first four-door version of Grand Prix style and performance. The new Grand Prix Sports Sedan. You've got to drive it. Get on the Pontiac and ride! Pontiac ride! The exciting new four-door Grand Prix. You've got to check it out. Rebuild excitement! Get 4.8% financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's All Out Excitement Closeout. Stuffing! Mr. Scrooge loves the new stuffing and the five piece holiday meal deal from Kentucky Fried Chicken. Stuffing! With five pieces of the Colonel's chicken and two buttermilk biscuits, all for only $4.99. Perfect for the two of us. Heavens, it's the Cratchits! Hide the stuffing. We brought the 10 piece holiday meal with four biscuits. And more stuffing. Just $9.99. I like the way you think, Cratchit. Get the five or ten piece holiday meal deal at Kentucky Fried Chicken. People have been wondering why Marino has been struggling. Mark Duper right here has been hurt most of the season, hasn't been able to practice. Here, Duper climbs up Kevin Ross's back. He doesn't want that interception to occur. It's a good play by Duper, but I was really impressed by the, the coverage that Ross had on him. Ross and Lewis may be the best cornerbacks in the football at the moment, the Kansas City Coach. Coach Shula said Lewis was, that's for sure. I heard him. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a look at the offensive line of the Chiefs. John Alden is having a great year. DeBerg has been very effective the latter part of the season. This is about his third comeback this season. He'll go to play action on the first attempt, and he'll complete it. Emil Harry makes the uh, catch for a short game. <laughs> Here's a look at the uh, backs and receivers for the Kansas City Chiefs when they go to a passing formation for wide receivers. It'll be Harry and Weathers in. McNair comes into the backfield. The Chiefs even change their left guard. Addicts comes in for Baldinger for better pass blocking on their passing formations. Steve DeBerg with a second and three. Christian Okoye with his first carry of the afternoon. Rambles close to a first down. Edged out of bounds, just a little short of the first down marker by Pro Bowl linebacker John Offerdahl. Here's a look at that Dolphin defense. Jeff Cross leads the Miami Pound machine with 10 sacks. Offerdahl headed to the Pro Bowl. Krause leads the team in tackles, had 14 last week. Clifford Hobley starts at free safety. Rookie Lewis Oliver has a shoulder injury. There you see in the dime defense, they come with seven defensive backs. Oliver playing, although not starting today because of that shoulder injury. Third and a yard. Okoye and Saxon in the backfield. Okoye is the tailback. They also have two tight ends. Christian Okoye hit and driven back by the Miami defense. I don't think he made it. Rodney Thomas led the defensive charge, and Barry Krause got a piece as well as the NFL's leading rusher couldn't make a yard on third down. Well, I'll tell you, the right side of that Miami defensive front just did a tremendous job. You look over here, they're going to win the battle at the line of scrimmage, get across that line, and then they're going to get some support from the outside. Okoye has nowhere to go there. You see, there's just a wall. 
good defensive play, and Carter is up there from his cornerback spot to finish him off. Rodney Carter, 24. Kelly Goodburn to punt. He's averaging over 40 yards a kick. Schwedes is deep for the Dolphins. Line drive kick taken by Schwedes at the 38. Back to midfield into Kansas City territory as he dives forward to the 44-yard line. Goodburn's punt covered 41 yards, but a 16-yard return by Schwedes before Mark Cannon makes the special teams tackle for Kansas City. No score. We'll be right back. You hear the thunder, thunder, the call of the road. Moving quick and with purpose. That's the whole idea behind Pontiac's newest Grand Prix. Get on the Pontiac and ride, 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 ride. Introducing the first Grand Prix ever with four doors. The new Grand Prix sports sedan. Now get 4.8% financing on every new Grand Prix during Pontiac's All Out Excitement Closeout. It wasn't too long ago when an American car here in Switzerland would make people look up in surprise. Not anymore. Oh, I wouldn't say they're all over the place, but GM sells a lot of cars over here these days. Good cars at good value. I should know, this is my dealership right here. GM exports more cars around the world from North America than any other car manufacturer. It's 32 degrees, and Jan Trumpeter is learning all about her antifreeze, the hard way. What is this happening to me? Don't push your luck. Guarantee it with Advanced Formula Prestone. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by New Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? by GMAC, the financial services people from General Motors. And by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer. We build excitement. It looks like Santa is here and not often you see a bundled up crowd in Miami, but it is chilly at Joe Robbie Stadium today, although I know that's a little consolation for those of you back in the Midwest with all those sub-zero temperatures. Dan Marino with that quick release finds Mark Duper for a first down catch. He's to the 30-yard line. Finally tripped up by Dan Saliamua. Now let's go to Bob Costas for an update. Three, two. All right, Tom. Dave Meggett, the giant rookie, is going to the Pro Bowl as a kick return specialist. Here's why. He brings this one back 76 yards against the Raiders, breaking and slipping tackles all over the place. But then the next time the Raiders punted, Meggett fumbled. Los Angeles recovered. Raiders have the ball now in giant territory, driving for a possible tying score. It's 7-0 New York, midway through the first. Thanks, Bob. And, of course, these two teams need the Raiders to lose to have a chance at that wild card spot. Here's Sammy Smith with a carry for the Dolphins, stopped at the line of scrimmage by Dan Saliamua, the nose tackle, in his third year out of Arizona State, who stepped in when Bill Moss was injured, Joe, and has done a fine uh, job for them. Saliamua has uh, been a real fine for this Kansas City defense. Oh, and he's a ball hound, too. He's recovered, what, five fumbles this year so far. He puts good pressure on the passer from the front. It blocks up that huge hole. Now look at this play. What the, uh, has happened this last time is coming from over here on the right side is going to be Derek Thomas. He usually comes from over here, but they've crossed up the Dolphins, and you'll see number 58 coming all the way from the back side. Not in the play, certainly, but Kansas City is giving the Dolphins different defensive looks. Second down play, Jensen with a reception. Just short of the 20-yard line, Dino Hackett caught him from behind. Jensen with a catch, just about a yard short of the first down. And it might be even closer than that. Crash Jensen, uh, he got this name basically from his uh, special teams days. He's just going to break in and break out. Watch, he's going to time this thing and break to the outside here. And Dino Hackett never had a chance really to cover him because Jensen didn't get that far inside just kind of like basketball screen. It was. Know, it Tom, was a pick, a, wasn't it? A lot of pick plays uh, running the pass offense these days. It is close enough that they will call the chains in for a measurement. I like that. See the Santa hat on the chain gang member there? <laughs> <laughs> the holiday season in full force here in Miami. Just that much short for the Dolphins. 
Let's check in with the other scores now. And remember, these two teams need all the other AFC wildcard contenders to lose. The Raiders are cooperating at the moment. Uh, Phoenix is leading Philadelphia. Pittsburgh is winning, however. Tim Worley with a one-yard run to get the Steelers on top of the Tampa Bay Bucks and Green Bay leading Dallas. Detroit with an early lead against the Falcons. Here at Joe Robbie Stadium, we're scoreless in the first quarter with 6.51 remaining. The football standing just short of the Kansas City 20-yard line. And Miami with a third and less than a yard. High formation, Sammy Smith, the tailback, takes the handoff, blasts into the line and didn't get much. Remember, he only needed about half a yard, and he did get enough for that. There wasn't a real good surge up there by that Miami front line. Of course, Coach Shula had one of the best centers that ever played the game in Dwight Stevenson, and now he has a rookie in there in Jeff Ullenhake, and Ullenhake is not quite measuring up to the job that Stevenson has done over the years. Let's take a look at it and see what kind of firing out, see if they're cleaning that line of scrimmage up. That's a pretty good block by Ullenhake, even though he didn't get downfield. He held... Celia Moore right there at bay. Dan Marino with a first down from the 19 of Kansas City. Pass is complete. Mark Cooper with another catch. This will be for a short gain. Kevin Ross with him step for step. Takes him out of bounds after a gain of only two or three yards. Well, Miami has certainly had it their way with field position so far early in the game. And that's why they're down here. They put together a few good plays because Kansas City defense has not given up the big gainer. And that's what they want to stop first. They don't want any big gainers by Clayton and Duper on the uh, arm of Marino. Make them peck away and the, maybe Miami will hurt themselves. Marino has hit five of his first seven passes facing a second and eight. Jumped offside. Marino's pass complete to Jensen to the five-yard line. It'll be first and goal if the play stands. Chris Martin tackling Jensen as Marino checks out that yellow flag on the turf. Derek Thomas was offside. It'll be first and goal at the five for the Dolphins. Thomas a little bit anxious here. You see the secondary dropping back and actually playing a kind of zone defense. Uh, Burris, 34, allowed Jensen to turn inside, and Burris was falling back to another area, so Kansas City went away from their normal man-to-man -man coverage by the corners, and they were burned on the zone coverage that time. First and goal from the five-yard line. Mark Logan. Swamped by the defense of Kansas City. Derek Thomas was in there. So was Chris Martin and Lloyd Burris. The three of them came up in a hurry to stop Logan for a loss. They all spot the ball back at the uh, eight or nine yard line. Number 58, Derek Thomas. Crash Jensen puts a little cut block on him, but Thomas gets up and helps out on the tackle, certainly. When you're going to cut block... Uh, Derek Thomas, you better make sure you continue to roll your body because Thomas is going to recover quickly if you just hit him and stop. Second and goal from the eight. Jensen, who already has caught three passes today, wide to the right, double wides to the left. Reno's in the shotgun. For the end zone, Clayton, it's knocked away. Good defense that time by Albert Lewis. He was step for step in the end zone with Mark Clayton. There's a look at uh, Marino, who went down under the rush, and his elbow's been bothering him anyway, Joe, and he's flexing that throwing arm. Yeah, he must have gotten a bump this time. I tell you, Clayton tries a little out and up move, but Lewis is all over him. Let's see if we can see Marino. He got his right side hit that time. Neil Smith, I believe, was in there helping out. And uh, I think it's just a bruise. Dan uh, shakes these kind of things off. He's a big, tough guy. Albert Lewis did a well of a job covering Clayton on that last pass attempt. Not a touchdown pass in the last two games. Very rare for Marino, though he did pass for 300 yards against New England. That's a free play for Marino, and he just threw it into traffic. Albert Lewis broke it up, but it looked like Kansas City was offside. Yeah, these Chiefs are anxious. They want to get back there and sack Marino. 
They've led the league. Miami has the fewest number of sacks, what, last eight years, Tom? Right, and they're tops again this year, although they've given up eight, which is a big number for them. <laughs> <laughs> Marty Schottenheimer looking on, and his Chiefs about to be penalized. They'll put the ball down at the four-yard line. Smith was offside. Well, Neil Smith is lined up right here. He just comes across that line just a step before the ball is snapped, and he doesn't get back. Marino's mixing the count up, trying to pull those guys offside. Third and goal from the four-yard line. Double wide to either side on the ninth play of the drive. Jensen in motion. Marino looks for him. He's got him for the touchdown. Jim Jensen beat Derek Thomas for his first touchdown, or his, excuse me, his sixth touchdown catch of the season. You know, we mentioned the old pick play earlier. That time, Jensen came in motion, and then when he turned up field, Miami's two wide receivers came down, and Derek Thomas couldn't get out there quickly enough with Jensen. It was a well-conceived, well-timed pass play. Pete Stojanovic will attempt the extra point kick is through. So Miami takes advantage of good field position. Jim Jensen with four catches already today, including the touchdown that puts the Dolphins ahead 7-0. Wouldn't it be great if suddenly you were in charge of the annual swimsuit issue, deciding things like how the models pose and who gets the cover? And wouldn't it be great if the models brought beer? Really great beer, like Keystone, the fresh cold filtered beer in a can that tastes like beer in a bottle because of Keystone's specially lined can. And wouldn't it be great if later that day you all went bowling? Introducing Keystone and Keystone Light, bottled beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? It's big. It's now. It's Pontiac's all-out excitement closeout. Now with our longest-term 4.8% finance rate ever on Grand Prix. That's right. Now every new Grand Prix is available with long-term 4.8% financing. Or get your share of millions in cash back on Grand Prix and almost every other new 1990 Pontiac in stock. But hurry. Your Pontiac dealer is closing out the year with big cash back or 4.8% financing on Grand Prix. It won't last long. See your Pontiac excitement dealer now. choose to finance or lease your new GM vehicle someplace other than GMAC, you might find yourself waiting in line instead of out hugging one. GMAC. Nobody wants to get you into your new GM car or truck faster. New Year's Day. Come home to the best in college football. Kick off your day with the Hall of Fame Bowl. The Southeast Conference co-champion Auburn Tigers, the Giant Killers, battle the high-scoring Buckeyes of Ohio State. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC Sports. Chilly crowd at Joe Robbie Stadium. They've seen their Dolphins break on top with a 44-yard drive. Jensen with the catch, his sixth touchdown reception of the season. That's a personal best for Jensen. Mr. Do-It-All for the Miami Dolphins. Four receptions, 41 yards, and a touchdown already today. Dan Marino hitting seven of his first ten passes for 70 yards as Stojanovic is ready to kick with McNair and Copeland deep for the Chiefs. Short kick against the wind. It will be taken by one of the up men. Dropped in his tracks at the 30-yard line. Good coverage of the short kick by Lippert Hobley. James Saxon, one of the up men, made the... Uh, kickoff reception for Kansas City. Joe, let's go back to that touchdown catch by Jensen. Well, we've been talking about pick plays, well-conceived plays right here. Freddie Banks and right here, Stan Petrie. They're going to get in the way of number 58, Derek Thomas, just enough for Jensen to be able to get that lead. Look how Derek Thomas has to hesitate there to break through the two, and hey, it's just enough time to allow Jensen to get open. 
Kansas City hasn't had the ball much. 4.06 left in the first quarter. This is their second possession. And DeBerg completes the pass to Emil Harry, who is out of bounds close to a first down at the 40-yard line. Let's check in again now with Bob Costas at NFL High. Okay, Tom, as you and Joe know, following their woeful 0-2 start this year when they were outscored 92-10, the Steelers have bounced back. They've got a shot at a wild card. Here's the way their game at Tampa Bay began. Rod Woodson bringing the opening kickoff back 72 yards. It led to a touchdown. Then Joe Ferguson drove Tampa down for a tying score. So they're even at 7. Pittsburgh's still alive in the wild card chase. Tom? Thanks, Bob. And back in Miami, it's... Herman Hearn with his first carry of the day, and he got only a couple of yards as the Miami defense continues to play well against the run. Lippert Hobley, the free safety, up to uh, make the tackle. There is a penalty marker on the field, and apparently against the Chiefs. Don Shula says, take it back that way. Shula completing his 27th year as a head coach. Holding, 85 offense. Still first down. Jonathan Hayes, the tight end, on a hold. And the ball will go back to the 30-yard line of Kansas City. Hey, when you have a team with the offensive attack of the Kansas City Chiefs, one of the things you really don't want to do is get put in this long yardage situation. Even though it's only first down, it's still twice the yardage you have to make. They try to avoid those third and down situations, and now they have to overcome a holding penalty. That's right. Marty Schottenheimer told us yesterday they want to avoid those third and longs. This is first and 20. DeBerg hit as he let it go, and it's incomplete intended for Hayes, and DeBerg feeling the rush from that Miami pound machine and grimacing in pain. A big Jeff Cross got in there and laid one on DeBerg, and he's limping around back there, and it doesn't look good. He's looking toward the sideline, but I think he's just trying to get to play. There's Cross. Now, he's from the University of Missouri, and well, let's see if we can uh, get a look at Jeff Cross laying a lick on DeBerg here. Cross from the University of Missouri's leading sack man. Oh, that's a good hit. Leading sack man with 10 of them this year, Tom, and uh, doing a good job for the Dolphin defense. Second and 20. DeBerg will pass again. Better protection. Screen complete to Saxon. James Saxon tries to get a block. Run out of bounds at the 35-yard line as Hugh Green played off the interference and made the tackle. Sure, Hugh Green, the rest of the linebackers, they're just dropping back into a zone defense now. When they had second and 20, their main responsibility was not to give up the ball behind them. Kansas City came with the screen play, and of course, Hugh Green reacted nicely and stuffed it. Boy, he was one, I tell you, they say he's back to where he was before he hurt his knee injury. I don't think so, man. Before he hurt his knee injury, he was one of the absolute best in the league. He's not that today. Went to the Pro Bowl back in 82 and 83. He has managed to have an injury-free season, relatively anyway. He started every game. Third and 14. The Berg has a man wide open. It's McNair. Todd McNair with good effort dives into Dolphin territory. Just enough for a first down. 15-yard play. The Berg to McNair. Lifford Hobley finally tripped him up. Good pass protection by Webster, Lutz, Baldinger. All those guys up front. Eatman and all give the Berg plenty of time. Now watch McNair split these guys and go for that first down. That's it. He finds that little crack and turns on the speed enough to make the big first down. Boy, that's tough to overcome, you know, first and 20. But they did get it on Todd McNair's reception, the rookie from Temple. Well, last week, Eric Dickerson caught nine passes against the Dolphins out of the backfield. The Chiefs trying to do the same. DeBerg to the 30-yard line with another completion. Steve DeBerg right on target to Pete Mandley. Paul Langford beaten on the play for 18 yards. Well, you've got to respect that play action fake to that big back hitting here. Manley in the top of your screen just going to press downfield then break across the middle. Langford can't close quickly enough because DeBerg delivers that ball right on the numbers. DeBerg said the passing game of the Chiefs so much more in sync now than it was earlier in the season. Here's Christian Okoye. Dolphins are ready for him. He does manage to pick up two or three yards, tough yards, as John Offerdahl and Hugh Green and Barry Krause, the linebackers, converge to stop Okoye. Krause and Offerdahl, the inside backers, have been a big uh, part of that Miami defense and 
as of right now, Christian Okoye with 1,387 yards, the leading rusher in the NFL. He would be the first chief back to ever lead the league in rushing. I bet he'd be the first Nigerian back, too, uh, <laughs> to lead the league in roughing. Where, where is that? Azuzu, Nigeria, he was born? Well, he went to Azusa Pacific. Oh, that's he came what it in is. From Anugu, uh, in Nigeria. Nugu, I'm sure. We've got Brian Soche of the Dolphins injured on the play, and while they tend to him, we'll take a timeout. I'm 30 miles from the action, but I'm responsible for a digital communication link between headquarters and brigade. If the data isn't programmed right, 5,000 troops could be cut off. But I'd never let that happen to my brigade. I'm for it. Get it, sir. Outstanding. If you feel life's more interesting when you make a splash. It's the right beer now. If you feel a great beer starts with great water. It's the right beer now. Because you're the kind of person who likes to get to the bottom of things. Call for the silver bullet. The one that won't slow you down. Coors Light. It's the right beer now. NBC Sports serves your need to know all week long. Dial 1-900-454-3500 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anywhere in the USA. Miami leading 7-0, but Kansas City driving. What about the emotional aspect of this game, Joe? Uh, the two teams, everything they needed to happen yesterday didn't happen for them. The, their best playoff shot. Uh, does that deflate a team coming up to a game like this? Absolutely. Deflated the whole bunch of them. I talked to most of them before the game, or a lot of them, and they were a little bit depressed. But going out here today, it's still uh, uh, not sure that they won't make the playoffs, so they're giving it their best shot. They keep peeking up at the scoreboard, yeah. <laughs> trying to look for the other scores around the league. And again, they need both these teams need all the other contenders to lose and then they'd have to wait for the Bengal game tomorrow night to find out if they could make the playoffs. In any event, the two teams are drastically improved over a year ago. Marty Schottenheimer, for instance, in his first year says he has raised the level of expectations of this Kansas City organization. Christian Okoye, look at that. He just makes bodies move as he comes close to the first down at the 20-yard line. How are things going? Let's check in again with Bob. Well, Tom, we showed you that Dave Meggett punt return for a giant touchdown, but on the next Raider punt, Meggett fumbled, and the Raiders immediately cash in. Ethan Horton latches onto the one-yard touchdown pass from Steve Berline. They've now moved to early in the second quarter. Game tied at 7. Back to Tom and Joe. Thanks, Bob. Miami 7-0 here as the seconds tick away in the first quarter, but Kansas City with a third and just less than a yard at the Miami 20. High formation. Christian Okoye, he's hit, but he still managed to come close to the first down before he was thrown back. It'll depend on the spot of the football. Kraus and Offerdahl leading the defensive charge for the Dolphins. Good penetration by that Miami defense that time. I believe it was Offerdahl, but that penetration disrupted the Kansas City blocking, and they very well may have held them short of the first down. Chains come out for the measurement. Okoye is just so big that even when he's hit, he manages to keep that momentum going at 260 pounds. And as you saw, by half the length of the football, Kansas City has the first down. Well, let's take a look at this last play. We'll look right here at John Offerthal, the oh. linebacker. We mentioned getting penetration. He's going to shoot across that line of scrimmage and get in the backfield, mess up the blocking. And he's the first one, really, that threw Okoye off track. And that play, a first down run by Christian Okoye, will bring the first quarter to a close with the Dolphins leading the Chiefs 7-0. Heineken, Amstel Light. This so is much it. better than other light beers. It's a great beers. A I mean, delicious European Nothing compares taste, to the smoothness, a refreshing, the richness, or the character of a Heineken. distinctive flavor that cuts through it's your quality thirst. quality comes through There's a uniqueness every time. to it. Heineken is America's number one selling imported beer. Amstel Light is America's number one selling imported light beer. Why? Just ask the people who drink them. If you ask me, Amstel Light is the best beer there is. I could go on and say enough about it. It's a light beer. No matter how many beers you
The freedom to say and think what we believe is ensured by this document. Join us in supporting the National Archives celebration of the 200th anniversary of the Bill of Rights. Listen to what they're saying about the Hyundai Sonata. The Hyundai Sonata is one of the most powerful cars in its class, road and track. Interior room and trunk space are outstanding. Motor trend. The Sonata has a lot to recommend it. Car and driver. Power, room, value. No one of the competitions green with envy. The Hyundai Sonata. We're making more sense than ever. Right now, factory to dealer incentives can save you hundreds on a new 1990 Sonata. New Year's Day, come home to the best in college football and a rematch of the thrilling 1988 Sunkist Fiesta Bowl. The fifth-ranked Florida State Seminoles battle the Cornhuskers of number six, Nebraska. The Sunkist Fiesta Bowl. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC Sports. Well, NBC Sports will turn its attention to college football on Championship Monday. Here's the bowl lineup, the Hall of Fame, the Fiesta, then the Orange Bowl to decide the national championship. Undefeated in number one, Colorado against Notre Dame. That's coming up New Year's Day here on NBC. First down, Kansas City from the 20 of the Dolphins. DeBerg has a man streaking across the middle in for the touchdown. That is Stephon Page, who just ran straight up the gut for 20 yards and a Kansas City score. That's that play action by DeBerg and the threat of Okoye. They froze those linebackers, and Stephon Page just split the seam on the outside. There's Stephon Page, 83. He's just going to go right down the seam, and there's no inside linebacker help. You can see Barry Krause and Alfredell coming in pursuit. They were frozen by the fate. Beautiful pass by DeBerg. So Schottenheimer's Chiefs are on the board after that touchdown catch by Page. Stephon Page with his second touchdown reception of the 1989 season. Nick Lowry for the extra point. And it's good. So Kansas City with uh, a drive to tie the game behind the passing of Steve DeBerg, who has six of his first seven passes. Take a look at this little play action fake, and DeBerg throws right on rhythm. You let a quarterback and his offense operate on rhythm, they're going to kill you. And the Chiefs have tied the score at seven. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll love your new Oldsmobile. We'll let you return it within 30 days or 1,500 miles if you don't. Who else does that? Unlike some warranties, Oldsmobile's covers just one part. This is the part. Oldsmobile now offers roadside assistance around the clock, even in places where there aren't any clocks. The Oldsmobile Edge, there's nothing else like it. Hey, hustlers, I got some more party time tips for you from Extra Gold Draft. First, never party with anything less than the full tilt taste of Extra Gold. Hey, this is one tough beer. Another tip. Never shoot pool with a guy that brings his own stick. And never ever shoot with a guy that brings his own table. Ask for an extra. Go for the full tilt taste. Nice shot. Thanks. Happy holidays from all of us at Angelsoft and Georgia Pacific. Interstate battery power starts up strong and keeps on going. To find an interstate battery dealer near you... The city government is being run by thugs who leave murder in their path. Don't worry, I'll handle that. You're being pursued by an alien nation, and the only way to go is down. Don't worry, I'll handle that. You've got to save America's future, and we're giving you two gorgeous girls to do it with. Don't worry, I'll... Uh... Chameleons is coming Friday. Mm -hmm. Two sharp passing attacks on display here in the first half. Kansas City and Miami tied at seven as Nick Lowry kicks off for Kansas City. Hampton and Logan are deep for Miami. Hampton will watch it uh, swirl around. He thought it was going to go out of bounds. It didn't, so he finally picks it up, dodges one man, and is taken down inside his own 10-yard line. Danny Copeland down in a hurry, 
to get Lorenzo Hampton to the turf. Here are the first quarter stats. And what surprises me is you see the Chiefs have rushed the ball only five times and only had 12 yards in that first quarter. So the Dolphins' defense is shutting down the run so far. And conversely, the defense of uh, the Chiefs have shut down the Dolphins pretty good. But both of these quarterbacks have been hitting their receivers nicely. I mean... What, they've completed 12 or 13 out of 17 passes. And I tell you, that's a darn good passing. It is indeed by uh, both teams. Good passing attack. And so far, error-free football. Turnovers have been a problem for both these squads. None yet in this game. On first down, Sammy Smith taken down with a hard tackle at the 11-yard line by Kevin Ross. Sammy Smith, the rookie out of Florida State, who is the leading rusher for the Dolphins. I'll tell you, Mark Logan gets a good block in there at Walker Lee Ashley just to the left of your screen, and that enables Smith to get some yardage there. Mark Logan, the running back out of Kentucky, is really developing into a fine player. He's only in his third year, but the Dolphins are giving him a lot more work. He said yesterday that the Dolphins needed him, unlike Cincinnati last year where he played, and they had plenty of running backs. Miami has a need. Sammy Smith, now it's Logan. Logan picking his way forward to the 20-yard line. Well, you were right on the spot with that description as Mark Logan, with his best run of the day, has a first down. Thought like he might have had the wind knocked out of him as he was tackled after picking up first down yardage. Lewis Cooper made the stop for Kansas City. Raiders and Giants still tied. Ditto Phoenix and Philadelphia and Indianapolis and New Orleans. A lot of ties so far, huh? <laughs> five for five. Yeah, uh, I Boy, I wonder how those Rams like it up there in New England. I guess they like it just fine being on the right end of that scoreboard. It doesn't lands for kick barefooted. Yes, he does. Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Mark Logan is up on his feet. He's been replaced by Tom Brown as he was shaken up on that run, but has been a big asset, both returning kicks and getting a start in the backfield for the Dolphins today. He had a 97-yard kickoff return for a touchdown earlier this season. Dolphins with a first down at their own 20-yard line. 7-7 game, 13 and a half minutes remaining in the second quarter. Marino with time. He's got Duper. Mark Duper with a first down, still going across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Dino Hackett chasing down Mark Duper, but not until he had picked up 23 yards. Excellent pass protection for Dan Marino this time. Duper's just going to find a dead spot. Nobody's getting on him. You see Kevin Ross, 31, coming up to make the play, but Duper goes inside for the good gain. I, I have to believe that Ross was a little mixed up in the coverage, or one of those Kansas City Chiefs were mixed up because Duper was left all alone. How the can you leave him alone? That's right. <laughs> and there's one reason why. You see how many yards they have piled up since 83. Sammy Smith. With a first down run, picks up three yards, just short of the 45-yard line. Mark Duper so far in the game, Joe has caught three passes for 40 yards, despite the fact that he didn't play with a groin injury last week. I know, and you know, that's another reason Marino's had a tough time this year. His receivers have been injured. He hasn't had a chance to practice with his receivers. Uh, Duper's been out with the, the groin problem, and Marino's been injured himself, you know? So we watched last week where Marino missed several guys open uh, deep and uh, part of it is because the guy was rusty you know he's just not having a good year marino with 21 touchdown passes 21 interceptions which leads the league he's completed 55 percent of his passes on the season and he's thrown for over 3700 yards now kansas city offside this is a freeman for marino and he overshoots his intended receiver farrell edmonds Chris Martin jumped offside. It'll be a five-yard step off against Kansas City. They've done it a lot today as Marino altered his count. He's giving it that old hard count, you know, hut, 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 getting guys to jump. They want to get back there and sack him. They know he has the best pass protection Marino does in the league. Offside, 57 defense. Second down. Let's take a look. You might be able to see him up and up. 57's on the inside. But look how Marino kind of moves his body and yells hard from time to time. There you see 57 up left side of your screen now. Chris Martin, he was the one that jumped offside. Marty Schottenheimer saying, watch the ball. Go on ball movement. Don't go on voice. Don Shula has seen his quarterback, Dan Marino, complete eight passes. Four to Jensen, three to Duper, one to Edmonds. Danny Smith to midfield. 
Falls forward enough for the first down, down to the 47-yard line of Kansas City. Sally Amua and Kevin Porter got Sammy Smith down. If he can develop, uh, a running game would be such an asset to this Miami offense. Yes, and I think Smith would develop. It's just the Miami Dolphin offensive line, I think, is not doing the job in blocking. Sally Amua appears to be uh, banged up on this play. Here is Sally Amua, who is uh, bending over in pain, and the trainers come out to take a look at him. Sammy Smith, uh, with 28 yards today, has become the second leading Miami rusher of all time as a rookie. Andra Franklin, back in 82, set the record for Miami rookie running backs. So Sammy Smith now ranks number two in that department. His best game was the first meeting with the Colts when he had 123 yards. Yeah, but you know, the Dolphins expected almost twice the productivity out of Sammy Smith that they've gotten. You know, he came into camp late, and uh, for running back, he had to learn a lot of plays uh, in the passing game as well, and he just wasn't into it mentally. He wasn't used to the timing with his offensive line, and they've really come along slowly. It's hurt the Dolphins. Uh, that holdout that he had really hurt the Dolphins. And speaking of Smith and Sally Amu and all the guys on the field, we will be picking a Budweiser Most Valuable Player in this game that comes up at the conclusion of the contest. Greg Meisner has come in to replace Sally Amu at nose tackle for Kansas City. 6'3", 271 pounds, seven-year veteran out of Pittsburgh. He was a Plan B free agent coming over from the Rams, and the Plan B free agents have been a big part in the Kansas City success story this year. First down for the Dolphins. Play action pass. And it's dropped. Duper had it. Bounced off his pad incomplete. Kevin Ross was behind Duper. Should have caught that one, Joe. Oh, he's going to get hurt like that. I mean, Marino nearly knocked him down. The ball was right on the numbers. Dan couldn't have put the ball in a better place, and Duper just can't hold on to it. If you uh, want to try to defend a professional receiver dropping a pass like this, you could say, well, it's cold down there. The ball's slick, and Marino really fires that rock. It's tough to catch it. I'm not buying that. <laughs> 8 of 12, Marino. He should have 9, because Duper dropped that one. Four wide receivers now on 2nd and 10. Marino may be changing the play as he is shifting his alignment a little bit and shouting some instructions. Now he's going to be chased from the pocket. And he throws it intended for Logan, but too short and incomplete as the Chiefs got pressure on Dan Marino. What about the playoff picture, Bob? Well, the Raiders have a wild card shot. The Giants are a wild card for sure, and they clinch the NFC East if they win today. Raiders have the upper hand after Mervyn Fernandez hauls in this 30-yarder from Steve Berline for Fernandez's ninth touchdown reception of the year. 14-7 Raiders in the second. Thanks, Bob, and that's bad news to the fans of the Chiefs and the Dolphins. They need the Raiders to lose to have any chance at a wild card. In fact, they need a lot of folks to lose, all of them, to I be think precise. Those, those Raiders will probably freeze up in the second half. I look for the Giants to come back on. Dan Marino directing traffic with a third and ten. Duper holds on to this one. Kevin Ross takes him down, but it'll be very close to the first down. Depending on the spot of the football, it will be enough. That looked like the same route that Duper dropped the ball on a moment ago. Ditto. Exactly, Tom. Exactly on Kevin Ross. Ross does a pretty good job, but the timing is so good on this play. You see, as soon as Duper gets his head turned around, the ball's only a couple of yards from him. Ross wasn't really in bad shape, but this pass protection allows Marino to throw right on rhythm. And when you get that bad boy thrown on rhythm, they're going to pile up some big numbers. <laughs> Fourth catch of the day for Duper for 50 yards. And it's first down at the 36-yard line. Sally Amua back at nose tackle for Kansas City. Marino floats one for Smith, who goes back to get it and is down at the three-yard line. 33 yards, Marino with touch to Sammy Smith. That's one of those passes the Cook just wants to hand it to him if he can. He just kind of lays it out there. And that's why the ball was a little underthrown. What a quarterback doesn't want to do when he has a receiver wide open is overthrow him. Heck, the receiver can always slow down and catch the ball, but if it's over his head, he can't make the adjustment. Here, Marino is taking the 20-25 yards, the sure completion, by taking a little bit off the pass. 
And a nice catch by Sammy Smith, his seventh reception of the season, as he went back behind to make the catch. Play started uh, on the own eight yard line, their own eight, and uh, Marino has got a touchdown to Edmonds. So a long Miami drive that started at the eight yard line culminates in another touchdown pass by Marino. This one to his tight end, Farrell Edmonds. It looked easy, Joe. Oh, yeah. Walker Lee actually, a linebacker, was in a chase position all the way. There was no way he could cover Big Farrell Edmonds that time. Edmonds just broke right out for the corner of the end zone, and Marino once again delivered the strike. Edmonds is heading to the Pro Bowl, but the Miami coaches say he can do even better than he's been this season. They're looking for big things for the uh, two-year veteran out of Maryland. Almost sounded like they weren't happy with this yeah. season. So Janovich for the extra point. And the Dolphins have a seven-point lead. A 92-yard drive by Miami. And they're on top of Kansas City now, 14-7. You don't want to slow down on your way to the top. It's the right beer now. Because you know to make a beer as refreshing as a mountain stream, you got to start with a mountain stream. It's the right beer now. When a night on the town might last all night, call for the taste preferred at better night spots. The silver bullet, the one that won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. Now get low 4.8 APR financing for up to 48 months on all new Cutlass Supremes. This deal is not just another deal. It's Oldsmobile's new generation celebration. We've made it possible for our dealers to pass along millions of dollars to their customers on all other models. Hurry, these deals won't last forever. This is a deal on a new generation. Oldsmobile. I've made up my mind. I'm going to do it. Why shouldn't I? I'm the one who has to look at myself in the mirror every morning. So before I lose another hair, I'm going to the doctor. I know doctors have treatment programs that are proven to work. More guys are trying them every day. I'm not bad now, but I wouldn't mind looking better. Your doctor can really do something about hair loss. So see your doctor or call this toll-free number. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by the new generation of Oldsmobile. Step into the future now at your Oldsmobile dealer. By United Airlines, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Coors Light, pure brewed in the Rockies, the silver bullet won't slow you down. It's the right beer now. to Joe Namath that believe it or not a chilly Joe Robbie Stadium folks those pictures lie it looks nice and sunny right it is cold here <laughs> well it is nice and sunny and you know if we weren't here at the game today I'll bet a lot of us would be right out on that golf course <laughs> might be wearing a hat and two gloves but uh, it's a beautiful day the Adovitz with the kickoff and McNair chased all the way into his end zone will down it there for the touchback well, a 92-yard Miami drive, and here's how they got the touchdown. Well, right here, Walker Lee Ashley is supposed to cover number 80, Farrell Edmonds. And you can see by that angle, he's in a chase position right now, and he bites on the fake. Ashley does just enough to allow Edmonds to get wide open in the corner of the end zone. There's Edmonds again, number 80. Ashley just didn't have a chance that time, Tom. Impressive drive by the Miami offense. The two quarterbacks putting on a passing clinic today. Combined, Marino and DeBerg are 17 of 23 for 213 yards and three scores. DeBerg's going to try one, and he completes the pass to Page. Stephon Page tries to get a little more out of it. He does for a gain of about eight or nine yards. Page caught the touchdown pass earlier that put Kansas City on the board. He is nine yards, second and one. Well, on the NFL Live show today, here are the headlines. Al Davis says the Raiders need an intimate stadium as their home for the 90s. <laughs> Sam Weiss says uh, that win affected the Oilers and their loss to Cleveland last night. And Bobby Beathard says the Cowboys will change their scouting system around. And 
The NFL Live crew will be coming your way at halftime to bring you up to date on all the news, the scores and highlights and playoff implications in week 16 of NFL play. Okoye stumbles forward and has the first down and more to the 37-yard line. Lippert probably covered him there, but no one wants to get in the way of the Nigerian nightmare, 260-pound Christian Okoye. Here is what he looks like coming at you. Well, Baldinger, number 77, and all, they just do a tremendous job with Okoye following up in between them. You see Webster, 53, also, but look at that blocking up front by Baldinger and all. Tremendous job along with Webster. Artie Schottenheimer was praising the work of John Alt yesterday. That might have been the same play. Okoye paws his way into Dolphin territory, although now they'll say his knee touched down. Well, they haven't decided. They're going to mark it back in Chief territory. They're going to come back about four or five yards and put it at the 48. You know, I, we talked with the Steve DeBerg yesterday and Coach Schottenheimer about Okoye and how good he is, and he has a problem. You see those big pads? Those big pads are very restrictive for him as a pass receiver, so we don't see him catching many passes. They'd like to utilize him more in the passing game. He's gone over 1,400 yards, but he got only a couple there in the midfield. T.J. Turner was ready for him in that Miami defense. Marty Schottenheimer was saying that Koye has really improved in his reads and his cuts from the first of the season. Well, the Raiders and the Giants tied at 14. That one's been going back and forth all day. Burline with a couple of touchdown passes for the Raiders. Pittsburgh leads. Bubby Brister hit Lewis Lips for 79 yards in a score in that one. DeBerg with a second and nine. Ball right on the midfield strike. Good protection for DeBerg across the middle, complete to Hayes. And Jonathan Hayes has a Kansas City first down. It covered 22 yards before Jarvis Williams brings down the tight end. Okay, on the right side of your screen, number 85, Jonathan Hayes just breaks down the middle. And Lifford Hobley, number 29, is in hot pursuit. Of course, Hobley is playing for the injured Lewis Oliver in that position, I believe, and he just didn't keep up with big Jonathan Hayes. Kansas City comes with two tight ends now, Hayes and Roberts. Page and Manley are the uh, wide receivers on first down at the 27. Take to Okoye, DeBerg still has it, and he's completed the pass to the 10-yard line. Good faking by Steve DeBerg. Everybody thought Okoye had it, and DeBerg got it to Manley for the first and goal catch. Well, they do. The Dolphins bite on this fake up at the top of the screen is Manley one-on-one -on -one up there with Carter. And here you see he turns Rodney Carter in a complete circle, and there's no way the Car or, uh, Thomas, rather, Rodney Thomas is able to react quickly enough. Jarvis Williams was coming for Miami on the safety blitz. He thought Akoi had the ball and gave DeBerg just enough time to get rid of it. First and goal. Saxon. Touchdown. Saxon with a six-yard touchdown run. A few boos here at Joe Robbie Stadium as the Dolphins have a 92-yard drive and Kansas City comes right back with an impressive drive of its own. And the extra point will be upcoming with a chance to tie the score. That one covered 80 yards for the chief offense. James Saxon, the old wishbone quarterback at San Jose State. Boy, I tell you what, I got a special bit of admiration for those quarterbacks, especially quarterbacks turned into running backs in the big <laughs> NFL, buddy. It's some kind of jump going from a wishbone quarterback at San Jose State to a quality running back in the NFL. Lowry's extra point is on the money. And the Kansas City Chiefs, an 80-yard drive to tie the score, 14-14 with 5.52 left in the half. Announcing a new generation of owner satisfaction. We're so sure you'll love your new Oldsmobile. We'll let you return it within 30 days or 1,500 miles if you don't. Who else does that? Unlike some warranties, Oldsmobile's covers just one part. This is the part. Oldsmobile now offers roadside assistance around the clock, even in places where there aren't any clocks. The Oldsmobile Edge, there's nothing else like it. 
the network. It's the most powerful tool in business today. At GTE, we can put that power in your hands. The power of a personalized communications network designed for the success of your business alone. The growth of your business, the prosperity of your business. We've done it for others. We'll do it for you. Because at GTE, the power is on. This December, things are really heating up. Heating up at every GM division. Each dealer is out to make December hotter than ever before. Deals like 4.8% APR GMAC financing for 48 months or cash back up to $750 on the roomy new sedan and sport coupe, the Chevrolet Lumina. Yes, this December is incredibly hot at every GM division. It's GM's hot December. Come feel the heat. Come home to the best in college football as Auburn battles Ohio State in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Then number five Florida State takes on sixth ranked Nebraska at the Fiesta Bowl. And a game that will determine the national championship as number one Colorado battles fourth ranked Notre Dame at the Orange Bowl. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC. Game tied at 14 with 5.52 left in the second quarter and it's been an offensive show so far. The two offenses moving at will on the opposing defense and look nick lowry is ready to kick it off for kansas city you know both of the quarterbacks have been off the shot the De berg and uh, marino both have really thrown some accurate passes hampton and logan deep for miami this will be mark logan no it's hampton who fumbles the ball goes back to get it and then is swamped by a red shirts and finally taken down at about the 17 yard line well, the score tied here, which brings to mind one of the great games in NFL history. These two teams. Let's listen to Kurt Gowdy back in 1971. The kick is up. The kick is good. Miami wins in six period Miami. And that was that Garo Yepremian field goal in double overtime that enabled the Dolphins to beat the Chiefs on Christmas Day 1971 double overtime game and of course Don Shula has appeared in more Super Bowls than any other coach in history and that was one of the classic games the Chiefs and the Dolphins 1971 Marino miscommunication duper broke underneath Clayton went down the sideline and the pass kind of fell right in between yeah Dan just threw that ball away you know what I remember most about that longest game that overtime game was the halfback for Kansas City Eddie Podolak and he was the first name that coach Shula mentioned yesterday he said that Podolak had one of the greatest games I've ever seen and he said what a counter play to Larry Zonka was the big gainer that set up that your premium winning field goal here's Don Shula and his quarterback Dan Marino interesting about Shula his contract is up at the end of this year second and ten for Miami nothing there on the ground for Logan Shula's contract expires at the end of the, this season we asked him about it yesterday and was he contemplating retirement was he contemplating moving on he said no but he figured he and the owner Joe Robbie would sit down soon to discuss that contract. Normally they would have ironed out the details by now. So conceivably it is Don Shula's final game as a Dolphin, though not likely. Oh, highly unlikely, I think. Uh, they love it here at Miami. They have this Dolphin team in the right track. So I doubt seriously whether Coach Shula would leave the Dolphin. His wife Dorothy watching the game and Don Shula completing his 20th year as the Dolphin head coach. One of the greats headed for the Hall of Fame. Marino in trouble, somehow gets away the initial rush, and then is taken down at the five-yard line. Marino sacked. J.C. Pearson came from a corner spot to get him, and Dan Marino sacked for the ninth time this season. Well, Dan Marino had time to get rid of this ball. On the right side of the screen, you'll see J.C. Pearson, 24, get in there. I don't believe Miami's receivers read the safety of the quarterback blitz that time, and it was an excellent defensive scheme by the Chiefs. Reggie Roby will have to kick from his own end zone. Naz Worthen is deep for Kansas City. Roby just got it away. Worthen from the 47. Dodges one man. Nice return by Worthen all the way to the 40-yard line of Miami. 
46-yard Roby punt under pressure, but then Worthen brought it back 13 yards. Lifford Hobley made the tackle, but Kansas City with great field position. Oh, they had great pressure back there on Roby that time, too. You see on the right side of your screen, 58, Derek Thomas stretches out, and he almost gets a piece of that big kick. I wonder how far Thomas would have gone had uh, Roby kicked him. <laughs> These little jig moves. What I'm impressed about this, besides this fine running by Worthen, is we don't see any yellow flags on this play. Usually <laughs> when you see a running back, a kick returner running around back there, someone's going to get called for a clip. Not Coach Schottenheimer's chief. Not this time. Trying to break a 14-14 tie. 4.03 left in the first half. Chiefs with a first down at the 39 of Miami. DeBerg has a man wide open in the flat. It's Emil Harry takes the catch for a first down to the 25-yard line. Well, you hear the people booing here. That's because Rodney Thomas, number 24, was a good 14 yards away from Emil Harry that time. He's really respecting the deep threat, and DeBerg is just picking these guys apart underneath. DeBerg has a little notepad attached to his wrist there that helps him out with the formations, et cetera. When he gets the plays from the sidelines, he can put the formations with the plays. First down at the 26, Okoye. Christian Okoye rambles for about eight or nine yards. Got up ahead of steam, and he was tough to bring down. Jarvis Williams finally did the trick for Miami. The subtle cutback running of Okoye. He's able to read the holes better these days. He's going to go left and let him cut back to the right behind that wall of blockers. Number 72, Dave Lutz, does a good job with his man, blowing him off the line of scrimmage. Second and one now at the 17 of Coye, setting new records for rushing with Kansas City this season. And he'll try to add to his totals. Nice tackle made in the backfield by John Offerdahl. Offerdahl got penetration to stop a Coye. Now Bob Costas at NFL Live. All right, Tom, the wild card possibilities are very complex, but one simple thing, all the other contenders for a wild card spot are rooting for Indianapolis to lose. And the Colts are losing after this Eric Martin touchdown catch on the pass from John Forcade. 10 3 Saints late in the second quarter at the Superdome. Thanks, Bob, and thanks to you and all your NFL Live uh, cohorts for keeping us up to date on the playoff picture today as we come down to the two minute warning here at Joe Robbie Stadium. That'll be it. Two minutes to play in the first half. The Chiefs and the Dolphins tied at 14. I got a phone call this morning from one of our oldest customers. He fired us. After 20 years, he fired us. Said he didn't know us anymore. I think I know why. We used to do business with a handshake, face to face. Now it's a phone call and a fax. Get back to you later with another fax, probably. Well, folks, something's got to change. That's why we're going to set out for a little face-to-face -face chat with every customer we have. But Ben, that's got to be over 200 cities. I don't care. Thanks. If you're the kind of business that still believes personal service deserves no, a lot more than lip service, what? welcome to United. Larry. That's the way we've been doing business for over 60 years. Ben, where are you going? To visit that old friend who fired us this morning. United, come fly the friendly skies. Once, there were a few proud men. Men of adventure. Men of courage. Men who knew the meaning of honor. There still are the Marines. We're looking for a few good men. Two minutes to play in the first half of a tie game. Reggie Roby is going to the Pro Bowl as a punter. He just got one off from the end zone under pressure. We were talking to him yesterday, and you notice he does something a little different from most punters. Different from any punter I've ever heard of. Punters normally, when they drop the ball and it hits their foot, it hits it at this angle, their foot this way. Reggie Roby drops the ball so it's straight where his foot gets right underneath it. He figures he gets higher loft that way, and he doesn't pull as many balls across, or he doesn't shank as many balls. 
I've never heard of that before. <laughs> well, it's worked for him. It certainly has. Akoye with a penalty marker down. Gets very short yardage. It'll be against Miami. You know, that was like a revelation to me or something, Tom, when he told us about that. 54 on defense. First down. When Re Rebby told us of the way he angled that ball, I was, I was shocked. Number 54 is E.J. Jr. There you see him jumping right now and gets into that neutral zone. But I was shocked that Roby told us that he drops the ball straight to hit his foot straight. Uh, I've never heard of anyone doing that. Kansas City with a first down now at the 11-yard line of Miami. They can make a first down without scoring. Fake play-action pass to Berg for the end zone. Just short of the touchdown. It was close. Jonathan Hayes, and now DeBerg says we're that far short. Barry Krause kept uh, Hayes out of the end zone. I'll tell you, Barry Krause has got to be frustrated. Number 58, the linebacker in the top left. He's going to be coming across. Field. There you see him chasing right now. He's in good position, but look where DeBerg puts that ball. I mean, is that a beautiful pass to Jonathan Hayes or what? It is indeed. In fact, DeBerg, Joe, has hit 11 of 12 today for 155 yards. He's only missed one pass here in the first half. There are the numbers. First and goal, Kansas City at the one-yard line, bidding to take the lead before halftime. Again, the play action, and Saxon can't handle it. DeBerg was off. He was so wide open that DeBerg just threw a bad pass, and Saxon couldn't come up with it, even though he had his hands on it. Well, we didn't say wishbone quarterbacks to catch. I mean, you know, <laughs> they could throw. Saxon is a pretty good receiver, and DeBerg gets the ball to him nicely. Saxon, no excuses. I mean, what can you say? The guy drops the ball. It's pretty far out there, and the, and the wind may have uh, played a little trick on it. I know DeBerg would have liked to have thrown it more accurately. You could bet that, Tom. So it'll be second in goal from the one. Let's see if they go to Okoye now. He's the tailback in the eye. There he is. Touchdown, Kansas City. Well, you got the NFL's leading rusher, and you need a yard. You go to him, and he delivers. And those linemen, they like blocking for him. In fact, they know if they don't get out of their way, 260 pounds is going to be pounding at them. He can punish his own offensive line if they don't move their man. Oh, that's right. Sometimes they get straightened up and he runs right into their back. Boy, that big helmet and shoulder pad hitting the, the back of an offensive lineman hurts. <laughs> that's why those offensive linemen want to keep driving downfield. Get out of that big man's way. DeBerg will hold for Nick Lowry. And Lowry's point after is good. So the Kansas City Chiefs take advantage of some good field position. Christian Okoye pounds across for the touchdown, and it's now 21-14. The Chiefs with the lead. Kansas City beat Miami up in Kansas City on December 3rd, 26-21, and they're bidding for the sweep, taking the lead here. Pittsburgh. 14 to 10. Boy, it would be amazing if the Steelers should happen to get into the playoffs. Uh, outscored 92 to 10 in their first two games. We did their 51 nothing blowout loss to Cleveland at home to open the season. And if you'd have said uh, on week 16 they're going to be still alive for the playoffs, you could have had all my money, which isn't much. But yours would be considerable. Oh, they look bad in that first game. Big Christian Okoye, he's padding his lead, you know. He's going to end up being the leading rusher in the NFL if he continues to have the kind of day he's having. Barry Sanders in hot pursuit of that title going against Atlanta today with Detroit. I would expect Sanders to have a good day, so these Chiefs would like Okoye to have a big one, not only to win the game, but to win him that rushing title. Steve DeBerg has been in the league 13 years and with some good teams with the 49ers and the Broncos and the uh, Bucks. The Cowboys, and uh, I asked him uh, how good was Christian Okoye compared to the other backs he's been around. He said the best. No question about it, the best. Hampton lets it bounce, picks it up on the hop. Good return, Lorenzo Hampton to the outside. Lowry forces him out of bounds. 
35 yard return by Lorenzo Hampton the coverage sort of broke down as he was chasing the bouncing ball and Lowry made the saving tackle force out of bounds for Kansas City offside 45 kicking team it's declined first down offside on the kick against Kansas City decline well, here's the return. Finally, when Hampton gets his hands on the ball, he's able to dance around and get upfield. He finds a huge crack right there in the Kansas City defense, and Lowry's able to finally run Hampton out of bounds. There's Lorenzo Hampton. And now he's given his team good field position at the 49-yard line. A minute and a half to play in the second quarter. Kansas City with its first lead of the day. They're up 21-14. Marino's pass incomplete. Off the hand of Mark Duper with Kevin Ross right there next to it. Duper just didn't get around quickly enough. The ball was a little outside. It was one-on-one -on -one with Kevin Ross. Ross is not in bad shape, but you see here, if Duper can get outside a little bit, it's a completion or if Marino's a little more accurate. And we have at halftime, NFL Live, Costas and Company with all the scores and highlights. Final regular season games in progress now. Mark Logan on the sideline and looking at his knee as Marino goes with four wide receivers. That pass will be a miscommunication again between Marino, who went down flat on his back under the rush, and his intended receiver, who was downfield all by himself, Andre Brown. Well, the rookie, Andre Brown, I don't know whether he got mixed up, but Marino had to let this ball go fairly soon. Here you can see him getting hit right now by Neil Smith. And uh, Andre Brown continued on downfield when Marino threw an out. So one of the two, Marino or Brown, were on the wrong page. So it'll be third and 10 with a minute 20 left. Duper, Banks, Clayton, and Jensen all in the game right now on third and ten along with Brown. Blitz, Marino hits Jensen across the middle looking for some blocking and can't find enough of it as he gets to the Kansas City 47 where he's tackled by Neil Smith and Dan Saliamua. It'll be fourth down and the fans want him to go for it with a minute ten left in the first half. It'll be fourth and about eight. Well, it's the last game of the season. Uh, they still have uh, playoff hopes, and if that's the case, I, I don't think it'd be a wise move to go for the first down here. Timeout taken at a minute 10. Kansas City has been the hot team of late. The last three times Kansas City has had the football they've scored. Nine plays, seven plays, six plays, a touchdown after each one of those drives. Schottenheimer now trying to rally the defense if indeed Miami elects to go for it on fourth down. And Marino trots back out on the field. They will go for it on fourth. I said fourth and eight. It's fourth and about six, actually. Well, I can see trying to pull Kansas City offside, but I can't see risking the fourth down and eight situation here with over a minute left, as well as Kansas City's offense is moving the ball. I think this is a bad call if Miami does, in fact, go for it. Double wide receivers to either side. Jensen stands alongside Marino. Marino's pass picked off. Intercepted by Albert Lewis of Kansas City. Albert Lewis with his fourth interception of the season. Marino goes to the left side of your screen and ball's overthrown and tipped and Lewis reacts quickly. Gets his hands on the ball and returns it now. <laughs> you know, Kansas City has the ball now going the other way. Uh, I don't know whether Coach Shula was trying to please the fans by going on fourth and eight or what, but it certainly wasn't your normal call. Well, Albert Lewis got his 25th career interception in the first game against Miami. That's number 26 for the Pro Bowl performer who will go to Hawaii for the third straight season. Shula electing to go on fourth down and now gives the ball to Kansas City with a first down at his own 48-yard line at the Miami 48 in a minute two showing on the clock. 
The Bergs pass incomplete. Good coverage by the Miami defense. Stephon Page hit just as the ball got there. Good coverage downfield. Rodney Thomas is all over Stephon Page. The Dolphins that time played a combination defense. They played zone deep to give, you know, not give up the long ball, but underneath Thomas and the rest of the guys just clamped down on the receivers and played a man coverage. I think that uh, that kind of crossed KC up a bit. Second and ten, Kansas City with its flush offense. Manly, Weathers, Page, and Harry with McNair in the backfield. Flag down, DeBerg, plenty of time, throws incomplete. Almost intercepted by Jarvis Williams. But there's some uh, yellow laundry on the turf. Yeah, it appeared one of those dolphins jumped offside. Big John Boza might have gotten a little bit anxious in there. Gave Kansas City a free play. Shula doesn't look happy. He might have given the Chiefs a chance for another score before halftime. Offside, defense, second down. Well, actually, we have two guys that jump offside right here. John Bosa on the right side of the line, and then Sochet on the nose tackle. You see both of those white jerseys jump and get in that neutral zone while the ball is being snapped. So Kansas City gets the free play. Second and five after the step off against the Dolphins. The ball at the Miami 43-yard line. 50 seconds left in the half. Kansas City leading 21-14. DeBerg had a... Crossing pattern called, and McNair was coming across the middle, and DeBerg threw it behind him. Had a man open for a short game, but one of the few bad passes off the hand of Steve DeBerg in this first half. That's all there was to that. Look, he's looking at plays, some kind of formations on his wrist for Coach Schottenheimer. And, you know, that was just a bad pass. He actually had McNair open and Stephon Page crossing, and it's the first time that I've seen the bird misfire today after he hit uh, 11 of his first 12 he's missed three in a row Steve DeBerg now with a third and five going deep intercepted Lewis Oliver made the interception for Miami Oliver with his fourth interception of the season snuffs out the Kansas City threat Well, Steve DeBerg tries to get the ball downfield here on the right side, but Oliver comes over in good shape. He's just making a, a laying back there in center field, waiting for the ball, playing a zone coverage. And if DeBerg certainly had this to do over again, he'd go the other way because Clarence Weathers was wide open on the other side of the field. Harry was surprised, and DeBerg, as he watches Oliver, say, oh, no, no. As uh, Oliver picks it off and Kansas City's chance for more points before the half, Go down the drain. 32 seconds now left on the clock. Steve DeBerg over on the sideline, the veteran quarterback. He said he's just like Freddy Krueger of those horror movies. <laughs> he, he keeps coming back to ha haunt Marty Schottenheimer. Marty said he was glad for it. Marino in traffic hits his man to the 10-yard line. Good catch by Brown. Andre Brown, the rookie out of Miami, with his 24th catch of the year. There's a penalty marker down. Andre Brown has had five touchdown catches, the most ever by a Miami rookie receiver. with a face mask penalty will add to the game and Miami will put it into play now from its own 26 yard line 24 seconds left you know 24 seconds and I'm looking at Lewis and Ross as they line up right now at the top of your screen and at the bottom of your screen and they appear to be in man to man coverage normally you think with 24 seconds left your secondary would back up give them a good cushion and make sure that these guys don't run by you but uh, I'm curious to see if Lewis and Ross stay right up on the line of scrimmage. That's dangerous, boy. That is very dangerous. Kansas City plays a lot of man, but not in this situation, you would think. But they are in man-to-man -man coverage. Marino takes advantage of it and hits Duper close to midfield. 
Kevin Ross brought him down, but it was a 24-yard gain. Looks like Marino paid the price, too. You know, I can understand coaches sticking with what got you there. They say our defensive scheme is to play man and man on the outside. We're successful with it. But in this situation, there is no way you should be man to man on the cornerbacks to give Dan Marino a chance to get the ball downfield to Clayton the Duper. Now, there's uh, the defensive coordinator, Bill Cowers, for Kansas City. He makes those decisions, but I know Marino loves to see man-to-man -man coverage in this situation. Derek Thomas applying a little pressure there. <laughs> that doesn't feel too good, you know? Rolling around in the ground, taking a hit. Well, Marino has found uh, Duper and Jensen most often today. Meanwhile, Mark Clayton has been shut out. Duper's caught five balls. 15 seconds now showing for the first half and Miami with a first down. They'll have the ball just short of midfield. I'll be surprised if these cornerbacks climb up again and play man-to-man -man coverage and it looks like that's what they're going to do which I find a tough time believing in this situation. 15 seconds you should back off and give these guys some room underneath and that's it. Top and bottom of your screen you see the corners three of them anyway right up on the line of scrimmage. Now they back off. Yeah, a bit. Now they're backing off. Sure. Marino gets it to Duper again. Mark Duper tackled as he tries to backtrack for more yardage. Sally Amua chased him down and Miami stops the clock with a timeout and six seconds showing. But that's what you do if you're the defense. You give Duper that catch underneath and then you converge on him and stop him. They've used up some of the clock and now they, they, they're out of field goal range. They still have to go downfield with the ball. Raiders and Giants still tied. Philadelphia's winning. New Orleans is beating uh, Indianapolis. Indianapolis in if they in the playoffs if they win that game. Pittsburgh making a bid for playoff action. And the Rams also headed for the playoffs with a lead at New England. That's got to be a shock for those Southern California players up in the Foxborough. Well, you know, uh, Jim Everett, the quarterback for the Rams, told me it wouldn't bother him much, you know, playing at Purdue and always used to the cold weather, but all of his receivers are from California. They're warm weather guys. He's worried about those fellas. Here at Joe Robbie Stadium, Kansas City and Miami, two teams that are alive for the playoffs but need a lot of help. Kansas City with a 21-14 lead as Miami has just used its final timeout. Six ticks of the clock remaining. We had a play like this, Tom, Dallas earlier in the year when Marino had six seconds left in the clock and threw it for a touchdown, remember? Twice this season, the Hail Mary has worked. It won't this time. They knocked <laughs> the ball free from Marino. And the Galbraith falls on it for the Dolphins, but time will run out in the first half. So the Kansas City Chiefs scoring the last three times they touched the football in the first half come from behind to take the lead on the Miami Dolphins as the teams head for the locker rooms at intermission here at Joe Robbie Stadium. Kansas City leading Miami 21-14. One of these teams will stay alive for a wild card spot in the AFC. A world in turmoil this holiday season. Perhaps we can seek some diversion in sport. And if that is the case, week 16 of the NFL season is coming down with some dramatics. One of these teams hopes to stay alive in the playoff picture. At halftime, Kansas City is uh, winning. But if you were with us for NFL Live and the halftime update, you know that the Pittsburgh Steelers are pulling away from the Buccaneers. And a win by the Steelers would eliminate these two teams from the playoff picture. There's what these two teams are hoping will happen, a win today, and then a loss by all the other AFC wildcard contenders. Well, it has been an action-filled first half. Joe Namath, the, uh, the offensive of, uh, offenses of both teams have been running almost at will on the defense. Well, not Miami's uh, offense. I think Kansas City's defense took control of that running game uh, situation. Sammy Smith in the first play of the game reeled off 15 yards. Then after that, the next 10 carries the Dolphins had, they only gained 19 yards. So I think Kansas City's winning the battle at the line of scrimmage. And, of course, the Berg has been hot. Miami must get better with their pass completion percentage. Marino's had a couple of open guys, and he's been missing them. 
I like these gloves, by the way. These were these a Christmas gift. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, buddy. I tell you, a priority in weather like this is to keep warm. I've learned that. That was a long time ago. We'll warm up on the halftime stats now. Well, the halftime stats certainly show that uh, the Kansas City Chiefs are controlling this thing. The total yards really don't reflect much in the game. The turnovers don't in the time of possession. But the Chiefs have turned all of their opportunities into scoring opportunities and have been able to uh, really do almost what they want offensively. The Dolphins, on the other hand, struggling. You see 11 rushes. Uh, you know, that's only uh, three yards an average, so you've got to say that the Chiefs are doing a well of a job there. Uh, the pass protection's been good for Miami, and if they can continue with good pass protection, uh, Marino might be able to get this thing going for them. Stojanovic will kick it off for Miami, which will give Kansas City the ball to open the uh, second half. McNair and Copeland are deep for the Chiefs. McNair at the one. And he falls across the 20 to the 21 yard line where he's tackled by Jim Jensen, the leading tackler on special teams for these Miami Dolphins. Steve DeBerg back out onto the field. He directed uh, scoring drives three of the last four times the Chiefs had the football. He did throw an interception on their last possession before halftime, but before that had reeled off three scoring drives in a row. You know, a lot of folks used to think of DeBerg as a backup quarterback. You know, 13 years now he's suddenly been around. And uh, he started a lot of football games. He's ranked up there pretty high on the most attempts in the NFL over the years. Two tight ends on this first down play for DeBerg and company. That's Christian Okoye. Nice run for Okoye as he goes to the 27-yard line, six-yard gain, before John Offerdahl can bring down the 260-pound Kansas City running back. Well, I tell you, Mike Webster up front doing a heck of a job, and so is Baldinger at the guard position with Lutz. I mean, that was a huge hole for Koye to cut back into that time, and the hole's only going to be that big if you get those offensive linemen doing their job. Mike Webster in his 16th season with Kansas City, and uh, you asked him before the game if he uh, had any plans for next year, and he said he hadn't decided yet. Here's yeah. Herman Hurd making a... Uh, an attempt at a run and getting only about a yard. Yes, Mike hasn't decided about next year yet, but I have a good feeling that we're going to see him back, Mike Webster. He says he's physically in the best shape that he's been in the last several years. And Mike, you know, he's proud of his accomplishments as a football player, and he says it is special to do something significant in a career and I guess he has accomplished some things huh Tom not only uh, has been to those Super Bowls but he is the first offensive lineman in NFL history to go to nine Pro Bowls more than any other offensive lineman in the history of the game <laughs> at that time we just saw Mike Webster <laughs> forget what the snap count was I believe <laughs> it looked like it he didn't snap the ball when everybody else was going 75 offense Still third down. You know, somebody else, Irv Eatman, get blamed for it, but I saw 10 other guys move, and old Mike Webster sitting dead still right there. I got to believe he just blew the snap count. Let's take another look. You'll see the whole team kind of go into the play. Well, now, he has a buddy in Mark Attic, 61. He didn't move, but Webster's the only one sitting still. Earlier this season, I asked him if he planned to play any longer than this season and he said well I don't know I plan to play this week that's about the extent of it the birds pass falls incomplete a little short of the intended target Clarence Weathers who was coming across the middle and DeBerg took a vicious hit from Lifford Hobley coming on a safety blitz he certainly did right up the middle the birds looking downfield 29 will come into play where is there he is and he just lays the berg out a good clean hit now that wasn't late that was a clean hit we're hearing a lot of booing up here but you saw the grimace on the berg's face you know he's in some pain and he's still down looked like uh hobley caught him with his helmet right in the sternum right in the chest the Berg never saw him. You know, Steve's looking downfield trying to find his receivers. Then out of nowhere, he catches that helmet in the chest area right up under his chin. And boy, I tell you, that's going to hurt. Well, the backup quarterback is Steve Pallour, number 11, who came over in a trade from the Cowboys this season. In fact, he uh, played five games, started three times for Kansas City after signing on October 17th. 
he was injured and that brought DeBerg back to the starting job. <laughs> but take another look at this hit and you'll see the way DeBerg gets jolted. Look, that's Hobley right. Boom, he's going to hit him. You see his head go back. Just a nice, clean hit. Another angle of it, and you'll see Hobley get in there and stick his head right there. Uh, good defensive play by the Dolphins, and DeBerg had to pay the price. DeBerg is being assisted from the field. And on fourth down, Kelly Goodburn is on to punt for Kansas City. You know, a play like that is set up not by Hobley, but by his defensive guys up front. They opened that full hole for him by taking rushes to the outside, and Hobley just came clean. Goodburn will punt, and Scott Schwedes is deep for Miami. This is the opening possession of the second half. Kansas City leading 21-14. Schwedes backtracks a good punt. He calls for a fair catch at about the 27-yard line. That one covered 50 yards for Kelly Goodburn. No return, and Miami will take over in its own territory when we come back. They predicted a gloomy year for everyone, but they didn't count on Mazda with cars and trucks engineered to feel just right. Now Mazda is racing toward an all-time sales record with record-setting deals that can get you $750 cash back on 89 Mazda trucks now. So come get a record-setting deal at the Mazda Race to the Record. At your local Mazda dealer now. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. Bud Bowl 2, coming January 28th. This time, it's war. You wish your data were better directed. That all your departments were interconnected. How are you going to do it? Well, you're going to PS2 it with the IBM PS2. You want to network up, network down, exchange information with other towns. When you're all linked up, you can share ideas from bottom to top. How are you going to do it? I'll tell you. You're going to PS2 it. The solution is IBM. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Bud Light. Everything else is just a light. By Zenith, the quality goes in before the name goes on. And by Mazda Cars and Trucks. Mazda, it just feels right. Steve DeBerg over on the sideline trying to walk off that last hit. And the Dolphins have it with a first down at their own 28-yard line. This is Miami's first possession of the second half. Play action pass. Dan Marino completes it to Mark Logan in the flat. And Logan has about five yards before he's tackled by Kevin Ross. Pretty good play by Kevin Ross coming up to make the hit on Logan. Ross stayed with his receiver downfield and came off him and uh, made a short uh, gain out of it. This Kansas City defense has been playing good football, Tom, especially this last half of the year. And their defensive coordinator, Bill Cower, in just his first year has done a marvelous job. Kansas City defense ranked first in the AFC, second in the NFL behind Minnesota. Sammy Smith stopped for no gain by Dan Saliamua. Well, we noticed the uh, chain gang crew and the Santa hats. Everyone in Miami, uh, the organization here, getting into the spirit of things. In fact, the Dolphins owner, Joe Robbie, for the first time ever had a Christmas party for his employees and passed out some bonus checks. That raised a few eyebrows around here. <laughs> raised a few eyebrows. I thought a bunch of people would have faded. Was Robbie really there <laughs> passing them out? No, he couldn't stand to see him part with all that money. He passed on the Christmas party, but his presence was felt nevertheless. We've got a timeout tending to an injured Kansas City player, and we'll take a break with the Chiefs up 21-14. 
This isn't an ad for diapers. This is an ad for Zenith's astonishingly automatic, high-resolution VHS camcorder. When you have a Zenith camcorder like this, babies will play a leading role. Zenith. Quality. The Mazda race to the record is almost over. We said we'd do whatever it took to set an all-time sales record, and we're almost there. But the race isn't over yet. There's still time to get record-setting deals, including savings of up to $1,000 on 626 and MX-6. But hurry, the Mazda race to the record will soon be over. At your local Mazda dealer, now. They say drink plenty of fluids. Swallowing's total pain. Introducing new advanced formula chloroseptic with the power of phenol. It penetrates nerve endings to work on contact, so it gives the fastest relief. And nothing lasts longer. New advanced formula chloroseptic works fastest, and nothing lasts longer. Now the fast, long-lasting relief of advanced formula chloroseptic comes in new cool mint spray. Also, try new cool mint lozenges. Dan Saliamua, he's up and about. He was the man that was shaken up on the last play, one of the stalwarts. So here is Coach Bill Cower. He's a linebacker coach and a defensive coordinator. And you know, he's never been a defensive coordinator previously. He's gotten this opportunity through Coach Schottenheimer. Cower was a player in his earlier days with Cleveland and just started uh, coaching under Marty Schottenheimer. And he's doing a terrific job. You know, this defense is ranked Number one in the AFC, number two in all of the NFL. So we're looking at one of the bright young defensive coordinators. And all the players offensively and defensively uh, very high in their praise of the new system installed by Marty Schottenheimer and his assistants in Kansas City this year. Marino's pass complete the banks to the 40-yard line. That'll be enough for a Miami first down. Ross spins him down, but Banks with his first catch of the day. Well, Marino has just passed one of the all-time greats, <laughs> Joe Willie Namath. Did you know that, you were, that he was on the verge of uh, passing you there? Uh, no, I didn't, and I didn't know that I had passed the 27,000 yards. But it's always a special feeling just to get your name mentioned, you know, in the company of these guys. Tommy Roy expects a Christmas gift now. <laughs> Here's Duper taking the uh, pass underneath as Smith streaked by him downfield, and Ross, not fooled by the... Other action does make the tackle on uh, Mark Duper, but he picked up six or seven yards. Well, remember now, these two teams need all the other AFC wildcard contenders to lose to have a shot at the playoffs. They have to wait till after the Cincinnati game tomorrow night. Right now, New Orleans doing its job, uh, beating Indianapolis. The Raiders tied with the Giants, but here is the fly in the ointment. The Steelers with a 14-point lead at Tampa. If the Steelers win, these two teams can forget it. Second and four for Miami. Marino with a quick toss, complete for a first down. Making the catch was Mark Clayton, and that is Clayton's first reception of the game. He's the Dolphins' leader on the season. That's reception number 59. Just another timing pattern. Clayton's just going to break inside off the other guy coming outside Edmonds, and you see that we can't, the defensive back cannot keep up with him. Albert Lewis tries to get in position, but Clayton had him on his backside all the way, and Marino put the ball right on target. And Clayton now has extended his record with 53 straight games in which he has had at least one reception. Smith... Maybe four yards on the run. Chris Martin, the outside linebacker on the right side for the Chiefs, got down the rookie out of Florida State, who has been the leading ground gainer for the Dolphins. And that, that's not saying much, especially in this game, 15 yards, as you pointed out, in his first run, and not much since. Well, that offensive line of the Dolphins, even though it looks like uh, Neil Smith, number 90, is getting held by Ronnie Lee a little bit and pushed out of the way, Ronnie Lee and his uh, cohorts in that offensive line of the Dolphins just don't open up the holes big enough for these running backs to get through. Smith's carried nine times for 31 yards. Second and seven. High snap, Marino pulls it down. And the pass 
pass incomplete. Threw into double coverage that time, intended for Jim Jensen, who's wrestled down by Burris and Hackett. And the tempers flare a little bit. Jensen didn't like that. Crash Jensen being treated roughly by this Kansas City defense. Well, Dino Hackett, I don't know whether it was a little bit extra or what, but number 56 right in the middle of your screen falls off to the right. And now you'll see he come into play and gives Jensen a pretty good shot in the back and then kind of wrestles him a little bit. And big Jim Jensen doesn't like that. You know, he's been around nine years and he says, hey, buddy, leave me. I'm a veteran. You can't be messing with me like that. Marino will line up in the shotgun on third and seven. He's got three wide receivers set to the right, only Clayton to the left. Intended for Duper, and through his hands it appeared an incomplete. Was the pass wide, or did Duper just miss it? I think he just missed it. I will get another look at it, I hope, but Marino went certainly the right direction, and the pass appeared to be on target, and Duper just didn't get his head around quickly enough or couldn't pick the ball up in its flight quickly enough. Let's take another look here. On the right side of your screen, you'll see Duper come into play. Now, oh, it goes through those two hands. It would have been a good catch because it happened so fast. Would have been a good catch. Should have had it. Stojanovic will try a 56-yard field goal. He has kicked a 59-yarder this year. From 56, this one will be short. So on fourth down, Stojanovic misfires on a long-range field goal, and the score remains Kansas City 21, Miami 14, 8.58 in the third. Go! They predicted a gloomy year for everyone, but they didn't count on Mazda, with cars and trucks engineered to feel just right. Now Mazda is racing toward an all-time sales record, with record-setting deals that can get you $750 cash back on 89 Mazda trucks now. So come get a record-setting deal. And all through December, the Napa legend, the better battery. Morning, folks. This is Captain Neely. Appears we've got the friendly skies all to ourselves. While most people are just giving up, one airline is off to over 200 business centers across the U.S. United. Oh, thanks for flying friendly skies. This is Bob Costas in New York. All the other AFC wildcard contenders hoping that the Colts will lose and Indy is cooperating. Watch the reverse off the punt return. Bobby Moore's to Robert Massey 54 yards later. The Saints are in business deep in Colt territory. Dalton Hilliard scores from the seven shortly after that. Saints 17, Colts 6. And that Saint score is uh, good news to fans of these two teams 21 14 the Kansas City Chiefs leading 858 to play in the third quarter these two teams need the Colts and others to lose the Colts would make the playoffs should they rally to beat New Orleans Kansas City with a first down at its own 38 yard line Okoye has about five yards he averages four yards a carry this season he coming into this game had totaled the football 344 times and his yardage total already a Kansas City record he's over 1400 yards for the season and his 11 12 touchdowns now counting one in this game the most since Abner Hayes back in 1962 in a Kansas City uniform setting all sorts of records Second and four. Here's Okoye trying to get to the outside. And he gets to midfield before he's nudged out of bounds by Paul Lankford. Okoye does have uh, some speed. His longest run of the season, 59 yards against San Diego. He'll be a Pro Bowl starter this year for the first time. He's had eight 100-yard games this season and 10 for his career. Jonathan Haynes, the tight end, limps off the field. Okoye has gained 59 yards this afternoon on 14 carries. Here's another one. Look at him move bodies. <laughs> that pile, a whole pile of people are moving downfield to the 45-yard line. He just carried people with him. Bidding for the rushing championship, and he has a 47-yard lead on Sanders and Dickerson. That's updated to the moment. 
by Ed Fibershaw. Down in the uh, graphics truck. 67 yards today for Okoye on those 15 carries. Tommy Roy and J.D. Hansen in the truck as well. Tommy, our producer, J.D., our director, bringing you the pictures from Joe Robbie Stadium. Elliot Cowb on stats here today. Got the 18. Okoye again picking his way this time. He didn't really get up a good head of steam, it didn't seem, and was stopped by E.J. Jr. Still got about four yards. He appeared a bit indecisive that time. Kind of stopped looking for the cutback, and then the hole opened up to the right again, and Okoye got into it. He would have liked to have hit it qu more quickly, certainly, but uh, it's only a third in the yard. Now, on the right side, you'll see Okoye kind of stopped looking for the cutback, but it's not there, and he sees that little daylight out to the right and tries to get through it. I'd say this is a two-down situation, Tom. If they don't make it on this down, they'd go for it on fourth down. Okoye has carried the last four times. This is third and one, so look for him again. There he is. Cuts up. Has the first down, still turning and almost to the 35-yard line. Jonathan Hayes, who limped off the field a couple plays ago, was back there that time to lead the interference for Christian Okoye. Well, I tell you, he ran right over John Offerdahl, the all-pro linebacker for the Dolphins. Offerdahl put a good shoulder in on Okoye, and Okoye just kept driving. You watch number 56 in the white uniform on the left up left side. Now he's going to get a clean shot right there. That's John Offerdahl, all pro. <laughs> and there you see Christian Okoye. It's scary to think that Okoye can still improve. He's only been playing football five years or so. This is a first down play for Kansas City. It's a fake to Okoye, and DeBerg has plenty of time. Wide open, his receiver is Jonathan Hayes. And he's inside the 20 down to the 16-yard line of the Dolphins, where Jarvis Williams makes the stop. Well, that's what happens, Tom, with a running game. You get that thing going, the tight end, Jonathan Hayes, is going to sneak across the screen right to left. You see these linebackers and safeties, they're all coming up first to try and prevent the run, and Jonathan Hayes gets inside behind him. That running game, Christian Okoye, boy, it sets up that play-action passing. And then what happens is the defenses aren't so quick to bite on the fake or when DeBerg is making a handoff. So that, consequently, I think helps the running game, too. Exactly right. They had given the ball to Okoye five straight times, and then DeBerg with a good fake to him, 20-yard pass completion. but Harry decides to run and is out of bounds with it. It'll be close to a first down. Let's see where they spot it. Heads up play by Mill Harry that time. He was looking to pass downfield and saw he had a running lane and took off with it and got a good gain out of it just at the first down marker. Well, you'll watch the Berg's going to lateral this ball. You see at the top of the screen, the left side of the screen, and Mill Harry gets behind the line. The Berg throws it behind him. Now look at Harry looking for a receiver. Can't find one, then he smartly gets some valuable yardage scooting down the sideline. I've seen a lot of wide receivers and running backs given the opportunity to throw it. They'll throw it under any circumstances. Covered or not, I'm going to throw it. <laughs> Second and one for the Chiefs. Sequoia to the five. He's got a first down. It'll be first and goal, Kansas City. The Chiefs have been a strong team in the second half of the season. They sputtered a little, especially with turnovers early, Joe. Other than that, they would be right in the, the thick of the playoff contention. Well, we mentioned earlier, it was a turnovers plus learning a new system. Coach Schottenheimer brought in a new offensive, defensive system. Learning it took some time, as well as Schottenheimer's staff learning his own personnel, how to utilize them best within the system. So they're calling better plays for their personnel this last half of the season. Ninth play of this drive with a first and goal at the five-yard line. Okoye, nowhere to go. Maybe lost a yard. Well, you see, Okoye is a very good running back, one of the best we have, but I don't think we're going to see him as a great running back because he lacks that ability to make that quick adjustment, that quick cutback. We've seen it on two plays now in the last four where he couldn't cut back. Once he stops his forward movement, he has a tough time going forward again. He's not as quick a starter as you'd like. Here he's going to the right side, and there's nothing there. He'd like to go outside, but he can't get going, you see, and he just is not a quick starter. 
Is that something he can learn? We mentioned he is just still learning the game. It's something he can work on, certainly. He can always work on your quickness. He carries again, and he's down to the three-yard line. It'll be uh, short of the goal line, of course, with E.J. Jr. making a saving tackle for the Dolphins. Excellent drive so far for the Chiefs. They're keeping the ball away from Miami and Marino as the Berg is getting ready to call a play. <laughs> Looks like he's looking at his wrist, and he is trying to find the right kind of formations to match up the plays. Here we are in the 16th week of the season, and he still needs his notes. And a 13-year veteran at that who's passed for over 20,000 yards. Flag down. Touchdown, Kansas City. Manley makes the catch. There is a penalty marker on the play. Big Irv Eatman at 6'7 and 300 pounds with a false start nullifies the Kansas City touchdown. All right, here's the man that's called for right here. Let's see what he does before the snap of the ball. Let's see if he moves just a little bit. Yeah, you see that big right leg stepping outside. He's a little anxious for that pass rush. And it nullifies the touchdown to Manley. There's the current drive, eight rushes and only two passes. Okoye doing most of the work for Kansas City, but they still haven't gotten any points out of it. Third and goal from the eight. That pass is complete to the two-yard line. Manley with a catch again, and on fourth down, Lowry and the field goal unit will come on. Good pass protection this time for DeBerg. The receiver's open in the middle of the field, but the way the ball's thrown, it's low, and the receiver's facing the quarterback. Had no chance of getting in the end zone that time as Lewis Oliver, 25, comes up and makes the hit. Three points right now. That'll give him a 10-point lead. Uh, I'm sure Kansas City, the way their defense is playing, feels pretty good about that. And it's an 18-yard field goal. And Lowry's chip shot is good. So the Kansas City Chiefs extend their lead with the first point of the third quarter. A minute 45 remaining. It's now Kansas City on top, 24-14. I just did something incredible. Five minutes ago, I had gray hair. But now, I don't. And this is what did it. New Option Instant from Clairol. The advanced way to get rid of the gray. Option Instant for men is different. With theirs, you have to pour and mix ingredients, but Option's the advanced way. All you need is this. It's so easy. And only five minutes later, your natural-looking color's back. Mm, hair feels thicker, too. New Option Instant from Clairol. The advanced way to get rid of the gray. The Mazda race to the record is almost over. We said we'd do whatever it took to set an all-time sales record, and we're almost there. But the race isn't over yet. There's still time to get record-setting deals, including savings of up to $1,000 on 626 and MX-6. But hurry, the Mazda race to the record will soon be over. At your local Mazda dealer, now. This Christmas, give something kids love. McDonald's gift certificates, just 50 cents each or 10 for $5. It is a Sunday. It's a good time for the great taste. Joel, say thank you. Oh, McDonald's. I forgot. Come home to the best in college football as Auburn battles Ohio State in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Then number five, Florida State takes on sixth right Nebraska at the Fiesta Bowl. And a game that will determine the national championship as number one Colorado battles fourth ranked Notre Dame at the Orange Bowl. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath from Joe Robbie Stadium. 24-14, the Chiefs over the Dolphins with a minute 45 to play in the third quarter. These two teams needing to win and then hope for help to make it into the playoffs. They need all four AFC wildcard contenders to lose 
then the winner would still be alive. So they're looking for the Raiders, the Steelers, the Colts, and the Bengals to all lose. And the winner would still have a chance. Lowry's kick goes out of bounds. So Miami will take over at the 35-yard line. Well, Nick Lowry a moment ago kicking his 23rd field goal of the season, but he'd trade several of those for one made kick against the Cleveland Browns. Week 11, this is in overtime. Lowry with a makeable field goal. 40-yard attempt is no good, and the Chiefs have to settle with, for a tie with the Browns. Actually, in that game, Lowry missed three makeable field goals, which would have given Kansas City the victory. That's one of the games they'd like to have back, although Lowry has passed another milestone, tying Jan Stenerud with his seventh 100-point scoring season. Marino hands it to Sammy Smith, who twists and turns his way across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Right now, let's check in at NFL Live and Bob Costas. Okay, Tom, the Saints doing their best to open the door for the other AFC wildcard contenders. They're hitting the Colts with a 24-6 lead right now. John Forcade flushed out of the pocket, throws on the run. Would you say Hobie Brenner was open? 30-yard touchdown, 24-6. Ron Meyer in an 18-point hole in the fourth quarter. The Saints doing their best to help out the Chiefs and the Dolphins. As we come to the final minute of the third quarter and Kansas City holding a 10-point lead, Sammy Smith not much there on that running attempt. Neil Smith on the tackle for Kansas City. <laughs> you know, it seems that every now and then Miami has one good running play and it forces them to try and run the ball another two or three times. Just teasing you with it, aren't they? <laughs> I tell you, uh, this running game of the Dolphins is uh, really not a good one and I think they're wasting time uh, Three out of four of the times they do run the ball. They had to just let Marino throw the thing. Well, the Houston Oilers are watching that St. Colts score as well because uh, even though they lost to Cleveland last night, losing the AFC Central title, they'll be in if the Saints beat the Colts. Here's Mark Clayton with a reception and buying some more room as he takes it inside the 45 and down to the 44-yard line of the Chiefs. One of the worries Coach Schottenheimer had about these Dolphin receivers is their ability to run with the football after they catch it. Well, that time, Mark Clayton did some good running on the final play of the third quarter with Kansas City up by 10. cities in 10 countries across the Pacific. They're playing our song. United Airlines Royal Pacific Service, rededicated to giving you the service you deserve halfway around the world. Come fly the friendly skies. New Britain, Connecticut is 119 miles from New York City. It only seems farther than that. People here live in the same houses their parents lived in worship in churches where their grandparents worshipped, and work for the company their great-grandfathers built, the Stanley Works. So it's not surprising Stanley tools are made to last. It would only be surprising if they weren't. Get ready for an eye drop so refreshing you won't believe your eyes. Wow. Look for Visine Extra. Like regular Visine, it gets the red out. But it also gives you an extra medication that cools, soothes, moisturizes, and protects dry, irritated eyes. For an extra medication in a formula found in no other eye drop, get Visine Extra. So refreshing. You won't believe your eyes. NBC Sports serves your need to know all week long. Dial 1-900-454-3500 for NBC Scores Plus. 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, anywhere in the USA. And speaking of scores, here's an update now. The Giants with a 10-point lead on the Raiders. Philadelphia winning. We heard about New Orleans and Indianapolis. Good news for Houston. Pittsburgh, 24-13 over Tampa Bay. A win by the Steelers, and the Chiefs and the Dolphins are eliminated. Rams up seven, and Detroit airing it out against Atlanta. 44-14 here with Kansas City up by 10 points, starting the fourth quarter of play. First play of the quarter coming up. 
Kansas City on defense, and Miami with a first down at the Chief 44. Marino's pass hits the defender, Dino Hackett, in the back of the leg. And boy, I tell you, Marino and his receivers, after a quick start today, have not looked sharp in the last two quarters. Well, right now, Marino's talking to his receiver, asking him to turn right over the middle. Marino sees the blitz and the hole in the middle, and he's expecting Edmonds to turn and hook up. That was a poorly thrown pass, in my opinion. I mean, it didn't appear Edmonds had a chance to break inside there, and I think, I shouldn't say really poorly thrown, because Marino did avoid a sack. But just looking at where he put the ball, there was no chance for anyone to catch it. See what Marino has done today, and he has a second and ten here. And is caught for a first down by Jim Jensen. Well, old Mr. Reliable again goes down the sideline, takes on Lloyd Burris, and catches over his shoulder the Dan Marino pass for a Dolphin first down. Boy, as bad as that last pass was, this one was beautiful. Marino just puts the touch on it and drops it right over the head of the defender into Jensen's hands. Burris is in pretty good shape, but not good ready, enough, right? not for that pass. Jensen's caught six passes for 62 yards and a touchdown today. Meanwhile, Mark Logan is missing from the Dolphin offense. Took a blow to the head, may not return. He's replaced by Tom Brown. Smith got loose for a moment, took it to the 25. Dino Hackett with a tackle there. Also another tackle is Lloyd Burris. Sammy Smith out of Florida State. Third leading rusher at all time for the Seminoles, 2,539 yards. Bothered by injuries as a senior, had his best year as a junior when he gained a record 1,230 yards at seven 100-yard games. Hey, you know the people in Kansas City probably remember Marion Butts from last week's game with San Diego. <laughs> Butts was the guy that did all the blocking for Sammy Smith. He didn't even carry the ball in college more than 15 or 20 times. Smith again, fumbled the ball, might have already been down, Miami has it anyway. That has been one of Smith's problems, fumbling the football. I think this was a fumble. I think Miami and Coach Shula got away with something this time. That ball looked like it came loose uh, before Smith was down, so let's take another look at it. Gets up in the hole, it looks like there's a nice hole, but it gets closed suddenly. Now let's see if we can find that ball. I don't see it from that angle, but that ball is loose before he hits the ground. Well, there's the fumbling problem of the Dolphins, who are last in the AFC in the turnover ratio at minus 18 coming into the game. Dan Saliamua has hyperextended an elbow. He's on the Kansas City sideline, but may return. Marino has a man wide open. It's Jensen who stumbles for a first down. Lost his footing, might have had a little more, but he does have enough for the first down at the 16-yard line where he's covered by Kevin Ross. Kevin Ross, uh, Burris, uh, Martin, they were all over there, but none of them were close enough to make the play. You see three red shirts around the ball on the left side of the screen. Certainly Jensen attracted a crowd there, but all three shirts, none of them can stop Jensen before he makes the first down. Dolphins driving here, trying to get back in the game. They trail by 10, getting a first down on Jensen's seventh catch of the day. Ball at the 16 of the Chiefs. Kansas City up by 10. Marino lost it for Clayton. He can't get there. Albert Lewis defending Mark Clayton the pass a little too long. That Clayton makes a nice little juke inside here and then breaks to the outside. There's the juke. Now he's open. If the ball's laid over Lewis properly, Lewis isn't giving him a lot of room. It has to be an excellent pass, but from the looks of Dan Marino, you can see he wasn't too happy with it. He had six and just missed them. What about Clayton at practice yesterday trying his place kicking for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looked like about a size 15 shoe he had on his foot. <laughs> He is the third backup kicker, by the way. He is, indeed. Stojanovic and then uh, Roby. The punter Roby and then uh, Mark Clayton. Marino for Edmonds, who goes up top to make a catch at the four-yard line. Now, the Chiefs are saying no catch, but the official has a spot marked right there. Lewis Cooper took Farrell Edmonds down, and Edmonds stretched out that six-foot-six frame to make the reception. 
it appeared that Marino saw something on the defense and changed the play at the line of scrimmage to give Edmonds that quick little pass to the outside. Here's Marino telling these guys something and giving a signal with his helmet. I know that has to mean something. <laughs> no flies out there. <laughs> And there you see Edmonds. Now, what's the question about this catch? He has it. He's down, and then the ball comes loose after he hit the ground. First and goal at the four. Nothing on the ground. Maybe lost a yard, Sammy Smith. Neil Smith and Rob McGovern ready for that one. McGovern, the rookie linebacker of Holy Cross, who's been the leading special team tackler for Kansas City and started a couple of games. He's been a, a surprise as a 10th round draft choice out of Holy Cross. Second and goal, the ball just inside the five yard line. intended for Jensen. Derek Thomas was there and again Marino throwing the ball and no one really ready for it. Jensen didn't even look back. No he didn't and Derek Thomas is right on Jensen. You see the ball go over their heads. Jensen's looking back but I think the timing was a little bit off. And gee whiz that, that's taking a big chance when that defender is standing right there and Marino still puts the ball in that area. Had Thomas looked around and could have been interception. Third and goal from the four. Thirteenth play of the drive for Marino. He trails by ten with 10.53 left in the game. Incomplete intended for Clayton. Kevin Ross covering him closely. Marino wanted a flag for interference, but no call, and it'll be fourth down. The Dolphins will settle for a field goal attempt. Well, I thought Kevin Ross did a good job. On the left side of your screen, 31's in pretty good shape right there. It may have been a little bumping, but I don't think that Clayton could have really reached that ball. Derek Thomas coming from the outside is the one that might have forced Marino to throw the ball a little bit early. Certainly uh, helped him throw it off target, possibly high. Dujanovic missed from 56 yards. This one a 22-yard attempt. And the field goal is good. So Miami narrows the gap a bit with 10.44 left in the game. The Kansas City lead now 24-17. We'll be back after a word from your local station. NBC's Christmas night gift to you. The award-winning movie for the whole family. The Sound of Music, Monday. About six months ago, we were concerned about our hard water, so the local Culligan dealer came to our home to do a free in-home water test. Something just told me I should know more about the water my family's using. So we did the test, and I could see the difference between the Culligan soft water and our hard water. Needless to say, we got the Culligan system, and we love the benefits. Cleaning is easier, and we use less soap products. Most of all, we feel good about the water we use every day. Call Culligan today for the Dollar Month Trial Rental Plan. Hey, Culligan man! Ma, over the years we've had, we've had our differences. Like clothes, I say jacket. You say jacket. I say hat. You say hat. I say jersey. You get the idea. I say fanfare's got the real stuff. Sweats, jackets, the stuff the players wear, the stuff I'll wear. So, Ma, what do you say? The gift that says Merry Christmas 12 times. Long stemmed roses with holiday greens and festive box. Only $15.95 at the Pedal Pusher. Sunshine and Grant. Open 9 to 5 Sunday. Hi, I'm Rick Van Pelt with the Green County Bar Association. If you need a lawyer, the Green County Bar Association has a lawyer referral program which will refer you to a lawyer practicing in the area of your problem or concern. For referral services, call 831-2783. Tony Beeson, only on KY3 Action News. 10.44 left in the game from Joe Robbie Stadium. Tom Hammond and Joe Namath with you. Tommy Roy, our producer. J.D. Hansen, our director. The Dolphins getting back into it with a Stojanovic field goal, cutting the Kansas City lead to seven. Shades of that 
overtime game, Christmas 1971 between these two teams. They're on target. A seven-point deficit facing the Miami Dolphins. The defense now needs to hold and get the ball back for Marino. Low line drive kick by Stojanovic, taken by Copeland and then fumbled. Picks it back up and makes it back to the 20-yard line. Well, if there were a game that the Miami Dolphins would like back this season, it might have been the first game of the year. They faced the Buffalo Bills and had a lead. This is the last play of the game. Watch Jim Kelly, the Buffalo quarterback, pick his way into the end zone. And Buffalo comes from behind to win 27-24, scoring on the final play of the game. If they had that one back, Miami would be 9-6 and six coming into this one. Oh, that was a tough loss for Coach Schiller. He said it was devastating at the time. They had worked so hard to get back. Had a bad preseason. First game was pretty good, and then they had to lose it in the last play. It was devastating for him. Christian Okoye, the lone setback. The crowd trying to rally the defense. DeBerg goes to the air, and passes complete for a nine-yard gain to Emil Harry. Check those all-important other scores now as this playoff scramble comes down to the final week of the season. Giants now ahead of the Raiders by 10. Philadelphia on their way. New Orleans beating Indianapolis. Pittsburgh, though, is still winning. That will eliminate these two teams. So when New England was tied 17-0 with the Rams, the Rams are going to make the playoffs, it looks like, but not the fashion they want to if they're struggling in New England. Poirier carries, and this will be a first down carry as Brian Soche hangs on to get him to the turf, but Kansas City now right in the spot they want to be to play ball control with the NFL's leading rusher. Well, Marty Schottenheimer's uh, offensive court, and hey, here we have the Christmas <laughs> wish list, huh? If you were asking Santa, we said uh, to Marty, what would you like in your stocking? And he said, a great receiver. He didn't hesitate on that. Somebody with some speed, and not to knock the ones he has, but just a great one that can really get downfield. And as he thought back on this 1989 season, he shook his head and said, well, fewer turnovers. Okoye. Well, they call him Chocho, and it's kind of like a choo-choo train there as he just chugs the yardage up, turns it up. Barry Krauss made the tackle for Miami. He's one of the graybeards on this Dolphin squad. And Don Shula, what would you want on your Christmas wish list? Well, upgrading his defense, that goes without saying, as the Dolphins have the 24th-ranked defense in the NFL. And also like some balance. That translated means what? A better running attack. A better offensive line. That's what it translates to. I know Sammy Smith's a pretty good back, but he has to have the holes up front. Second and two after that eight-yard gain by Christian Okoye. Okoye hit at the line of scrimmage. Fell forward for a yard, but it looks like he is a little short of the first down. It'll depend on the mark of the football. T.J. Turner on the defensive end making the tackle. Meanwhile, the clock ticking away. And the Dolphins, down by seven, need their defense to toughen up here. Well, Kansas City, pretty smart. Notice on first down this series, they passed the ball. I think everyone, you folks at home, us up here, the Dolphins, everyone was expecting a Koye on first down. The Bird smartly went to the pass play. That enabled them to pick up the short yardage needed on second down. So I wouldn't be surprised to see some first down passing. Even though with a Koye, boy, I'd keep it on the ground. I'd give it to that big man. Okoye, play a stop before it went underway with a flag down. Delay, open. Well, that'll set them back five yards, and that will uh, inhibit their ball control a little bit now. DeBerg may have to put it up after all. Those penalties are killers to a ball control team, running well, team. DeBerg fell asleep that time. He had time when he went up to the line of scrimmage to kind of move it along and get the snap off before the 30 seconds expired. Uh, I think he just missed the clock. We saw him come up to the line of scrimmage and get set. Puts him in a first down and 15 situation, which isn't the end of the world. Not the way Okoye is picking up Yardy. And there's the uh, up-to-date list of rushes. 93 yards for Okoye today. Barry Sanders has 111, but Christian still has the lead for the NFL rushing championship. The Bergs pass wide open at midfield and off the hands of Pete Mandlin. 
Well, Manley comes downfield and turns inside. It'll be on the right side of your screen. You'll see number 89, and the ball is going to be behind him. Now, I don't know whether DeBerg expected Manley to kind of pull up in that area or Manley kept floating, or it was just a bad pass by DeBerg. One thing for sure, Manley was open. Scott Niner's team leads by seven with second and 15 here at the 37-yard line of Kansas City. Okoye, maybe a yard. Wrapped up almost as soon as he had the handoff by Brian Soche. Let's go now to Bob Costas at NFL Live. All right, Tom, thank you very much. John Tagliabu of the New York Times, the brother of NFL Commissioner Paul Tagliabu, was one of four journalists shot and wounded while covering the fierce fighting in Romania today. Tagliabu was wounded in the back by a sniper who fired on a car carrying him and other reporters. All the reporters are expected to survive. John Tagliabu, the brother of Commissioner Paul Tagliabu, is listed now in satisfactory condition. Let's go back to the ballgame. Thanks, Bob. And, uh Brings you back to reality. We're here at the football game, and meanwhile, the world is erupting in flames in certain areas. And that pass intended for Todd McNair is incomplete. Jeff Cross put the pressure on DeBerg, and Kansas City will have to punt. Well, Kansas City stopped themselves that time. They had to delay a game penalty, which put them in a long yardage situation, and then they had to mix up with Mandley and DeBerg. Uh, they just stopped themselves that time. Schottenheimer. Can't be happy with that effort. Meanwhile, Marino and Shula getting together, and the Dolphins will get the football and a chance to try to tie the game. Goodburn has averaged 45 yards a kick. Schwedes, the deep man for Miami, bad snap, and the kick is partially blocked. Goodburn does get it away and gets a good roll out of it. Finally picked up by uh, Ernest Gibson of the Dolphins, who is out of bounds at about the Miami 45-yard line. Goodburn did manage to get it off for 23 yards. Lifford Hobley was putting the pressure on Woodburn and got a piece of the football. So the crowd now getting into the game, and the Dolphins will have the ball trailing by seven. Holiday greetings from Budweiser. People who bring you Budweiser wish you and yours the very best of everything this holiday season. Four-wheel drive? It means that you can drive in every direction at the same time. There's four steering wheels for driving. Anti-lock brakes? Yes, you can lock them so no one will spill them. Kids may not understand what Ford Aerostar's new four-wheel drive and standard rear anti-lock brakes are all about, but rest assured, their parents do. Now get 4.8 financing for up to 48 months or a $1,000 cash bonus on Ford Aerostar. Enemy on the open. Lord, up on your right, on two. I'm 30 miles from the action, but I'm responsible for a digital communication link between headquarters and brigade. Enemy tank, checkpoint one. If the data isn't programmed right, 5,000 troops could be cut off. Enemy forces together. But I'd never let that happen to my brigade. Our four is eliminated. Be all that you can be. You did it, sir. Outstanding. NBC Sports coverage of the National Football League is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Interstate Batteries. For a dealer near you, call 1-800-CRANK-IT. And by Budweiser, the king of beers. Remember, know when to say when. Dan Marino and the Miami Dolphins trailing by seven have a first down at their own 43-yard line. After a 23-yard punt by Goodburn under pressure, a low snap, he managed to get it away. Reno's pass. Short hops Mark Logan. Did he make the catch? Yes, he did. Good effort by Logan, who's suffered a couple of injuries today, but a 
on his knees grab there. Let's go back to that punt, Joe. Well, the center for Kansas City, Mark Cannon, doesn't get the ball back. You see it hit the ground, and Goodburn picks it up and just gets the ball around the rushing, rushing uh, Andre Brown. That ball was not deflected, but Goodburn got the ball off really a uh, nice fashion because Brown was just in front of Goodburn. A nice job by Kelly Goodburn getting that ball off. Second down and seven for Miami. Here's Clayton with a catch, and it'll be enough for a first down. Clayton slanting in in front of Kevin Ross. Marino fires a bullet right at the head of Mark Clayton, who catches it for a first down. Well, Kansas City's got to do something to get Marino out of his rhythm. Here you see Clayton break underneath Kevin Ross, and the timing is such that there's nothing Ross could really do to stop the play. Kansas City must find a way to put some kind of pressure on Dan Marino or at least disrupt his rhythm by bumping those wide receivers at the line of scrimmage. In the first meeting between these two teams in Kansas City, the Dolphins came back in the second half scoring three touchdowns, although Kansas City held on to winning 26-21. Marino down the sideline. Good to the 20-yard line. Mark Clayton beating Kevin Ross. 26-yard game. Well, one time Clayton takes it inside. This time he fakes and takes it outside. He set Kevin Ross up for this with his last reception. This time he'll fake inside. Ross bites a little bit. And he, Clayton just gets enough to the outside to catch the perfectly thrown pass by Marino. Mark Clayton closing in on 1,000 yards receiving this season. It would be a Miami record fourth time over 1,000. He has 60 today, so he is getting there. Logan to the six. Albert Lewis made a saving tackle as Mark Logan turned the corner and picked up another Miami first down. Another one of those successful running plays that are going to mess up this Miami offense because they're going to try and run the ball again, probably. But there's just good blocking out in front there by the Miami linemen leading the play, and Chiefs just had to stop the play way downfield. Excellent offensive blocking. They call Mark Logan Smiley. He always has a smile on his face, and he's smiling after that run. Marino looks to the end zone, and the pass is there. Mark Clayton for the touchdown, throws the ball into the stands. Clayton against Kevin Ross, a classic matchup between two of the best at their positions, and Marino finds Clayton for the touchdown. What nerve Marino has. I mean, Ross was all over Clayton, just step for step right there, but the ball was released. Clayton's timing was perfect, and he turned around and said, hello, he's right in his arm. Perfectly executed. Stojanovic now for the tie. <laughs> Penalty marker down. It looked like Kansas City was offside. Derek Thomas came flying across the line. The kick is through the uprights. And if it is against Kansas City, as we huddle here, well, I think they made contact before the ball was snapped. They'll probably have to kick it over again. If he didn't make contact, then the extra point would stand. Encroachment, 58 defense. The penalty, penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. We try. Uh, I don't understand this. The penalty will be forced on the kickoff. Retry. They'll have to what? kick again. Well, what, are they going to get penalized for a play that happened two plays earlier? <laughs> I don't understand that. I mean, they can decline this penalty. How are they going to... Boy, that's a surprise. I mean, here we have this play. Now Kansas City is going to get penalized for a play that happened two plays prior to the kickoff. I've not heard of that one. But in any event, Stojanovic kicks it through on the second try. Got them both, as a matter of fact. It's a 24-24 game after Marino hits Clayton for the touchdown. It will.
will stop. It will at some point. But it went on forever. So there was glass everywhere. In the living room, I have a 700-pound soapstone wood-burning stove that had bounced all the way across the living room, sitting in the middle of the floor. It was obvious from the very beginning that our house was no longer habitable. When I called my agent and told him we needed to find temporary housing, within 48 hours, Allstate had written me a check to pay for our moving expenses and for our rent. I expected bean pushers, and I got uh, sensitive people instead. Announcing the biggest sale ever from Ford. Now, Ford gives you a $1,000 cash bonus on the number one selling cars and trucks in America. A $1,000 cash bonus from Ford on Taurus, Thunderbird, Probe, Tempo, Mustang, and Festiva. A $1,000 cash bonus on the best-selling Ford Escort and Ford Ranger, plus Bronco and Aerostar. Or choose 4.8% financing for 48 months on Taurus and Aerostar. It's the biggest sale ever from Ford, with a $1,000 cash bonus on many of America's best-selling cars and trucks. See your Ford dealer today. It began as a game. It turned into a battle. And now, it's out of control. Bud Bowl 2, coming January 28th. This time, it's war. Jane Pauley, flashback to the 80s, Wednesday on NBC. Miami has come from 10 points down to tie the game at 24 with 4 minutes and 24 seconds left. You know, just to clear up that last play, the whistle had been blown before the snap of the ball. That's why that extra point didn't stand the first time. And uh, the penalty assessed on the kickoff, so Stojanovic kicks from his 40. High kick. Fielded by Copeland. Nice return by Copeland across the 30 to the 32-yard line. And speaking of nice, this pass from Marino to Clayton fits that description. Sure, this doesn't tell the story. Marino's timing here appears to be okay. But when we look at this other isolation replay, Kevin Ross on Mark Clayton. Watch how close Ross is here. Now Clayton turns around, the ball's there. Ross, <laughs> he just can't believe, I don't think, that Marino threw the ball to his man. There's Marino, who has hit 27 of 42 for 304 yards and three touchdowns. He's had one interception. And Mark Clayton with five receptions, 66 yards, all in the second half. Now DeBerg must go to work. Complete to Page. Stephon Page to the 45. Finally wrestled down at about the 46 or 7 yard line. Jarvis Williams at the bottom of the stack for Miami. DeBerg to Page. And uh, these two opposing quarterbacks have had big days. Well, if Miami can't get a pass rush on DeBerg, give DeBerg this kind of time back there. There's Stephon Page in the middle of the screen. He's just going to stop. And Lifford Hobley comes up late. Then. Naturally, Page turns inside and makes a nice gain out of it. But again, if the Dolphins can't get any pressure back there on DeBerg, he's going to keep picking them apart. First down at the Chief 47. DeBerg's pass caught by Hayes. Nice catch. Hayes was battling with Offerdahl. In fact, Offerdahl was draped all over him. He still managed to make the grab. We've seen some of the most accurate passing today. We've seen some short. Sure, we've seen some misfires. But for the most part, given the wind conditions, too, I think these quarterbacks have been remarkably accurate. The clock ticking away, approaching three minutes left in the game. It's hard to read with the sun shining on it. Here's Okoye, Christian Okoye. Straight ahead for a first down. He's to the 40-yard line of the Dolphins, and carrying bodies with him goes inside even that. Irv Eatman was over there egging him on. That's the clock, and again, it's hard to read, but it says two minutes and 44 seconds. Take a better look at it as it's in the shade. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the NFL is prohibited. This game, the property of the NFL, the Chiefs and Dolphins, all rights reserved. First down, Kansas City from the Miami 40-yard line. DeBerg wide open to Harry, who drops it. 
Perry just flat dropped the football. Heard the footsteps. I guess that's a classic case. Yeah, he could have heard the footsteps. He could have taken his eye off the ball just a split second, but no doubt the bird delivered it right on target. Let's see if he can see Harry take his eyes off the ball. No, it's too tough to see here, but certainly the pass was on target. It'll be second and 10 for Kansas City. Two minutes and 17 seconds left. Game tied at 24. The ball at the 40-yard line of the Dolphins. Manley, first down inside the 25 of Miami. Steve DeBerg again delivering on target as the clock ticks down to the two-minute warning. Two minutes left in the game. One of these teams fighting for a chance, perhaps, at the playoffs. They need to win, and the Chiefs are threatening. AT&T, the right choice. George Blanda played pro football for 26 years with four different teams. But who holds the record for most seasons with the same team? Jim Hart of the Cardinals, Jim Marshall of the Vikings, or John Brody of the 49ers? Which would you choose? Did you know that now almost any size business can save with AT&T? If your business is spending as little as $50 a month in long distance, you can save 10 to 28% or more with the new AT&T Pro Watts. It works over your regular telephone lines, and you automatically get bigger and bigger discounts. The more you spend, the bigger the discounts. Whether you're spending $50 a month up to $5,000 a month, we have the one plan for you. Call us. We'll even waive the sign-up fee. Pro Watts, another AT&T advantage. In 1979, Jim Marshall completed 19 years of service with the Minnesota Vikings. If you said Marshall, you made the right choice. Well, the national championship in college football will be decided on New Year's Day, and you can watch three great bowls here on NBC. The Hall of Fame, Auburn against Ohio State. The Fiesta, Nebraska and Florida State. And then the Orange Bowl, Colorado, number one and undefeated at 11-0 against once-beaten Notre Dame. It all comes your way on NBC starting at 1 o'clock, Championship Monday, New Year's Day. Two teams fighting to hopefully stay alive in the playoffs. They need a lot of help. Score tied at 24. Marty Schottenheimer and his Chiefs have a first down at the 24-yard line. Two minutes left in the game as Don Shula hoping to have his defense force a turnover here. Tom Olivadotti is defensive coordinator alongside. The pressure's on him. Timeouts remaining. Christian Okoye has carried 25 times for 96 yards. We'll see if the Chiefs play it safe here and run the ball. They do with Okoye trying to set it up for a Nick Lowry field goal attempt. You agree with the strategy, Joe? Yes, I do, and Miami's strategy also. Miami quickly calls a timeout. And it stops the clock at a minute 52. Miami with two timeouts remaining. If you stripped Ford Taurus of all its awards, erased all the glowing reviews, removed all evidence of its presence on the road, and introduced it today. Ford Taurus would still be ahead of its time. Now get 4.8 financing for up to 48 months or a thousand dollar cash bonus on Ford Taurus. Come home to the best in college football as Auburn battles Ohio State in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Then number five Florida State takes on sixth ranked Nebraska at the Fiesta Bowl. And a game that will determine the national championship as number one Colorado battles fourth ranked Notre Dame at the Orange Bowl. New Year's Day, the best bowls are on NBC. Nick Lowry is the most accurate field goal kicker in NFL history at 77.2%. He may be called on to try to win this one for Kansas City. But remember, those three chip shots, at least makeable field goals against Cleveland, and Kansas City had to settle for a tie. There's an update on all the scores. Everything going the way these two teams would want, except for that score. Pittsburgh 31-22 over Tampa Bay, but the Bucks coming back a little bit within nine. These two teams need Pittsburgh to lose, along with the Raiders and the Colts to stay alive. 
Yeah, but also need Cincinnati tomorrow night. You know, we mentioned uh, Lowry's accuracy, Tom. Uh, I know he doesn't need anyone defending him, but up at Cleveland with that swirling wind and horrendous weather conditions and a horrendous playing surface, if ever Lowry is going to miss three field goals from those close, makeable ranges, that was the day, boy. It was a really ugly, bad weather day, and the footing wasn't good for him. Uh, I don't know if this guy's ever missed three field goals in a game other than that one. Usually is Mr. Automatic. Second and nine for Kansas City. The ball at Miami's 23. This is a play action pass to Berg. Pumps once and then is sacked. Back to the 28 yard line. First sack of the day for the Miami defense. The Miami pound machine comes through. Hugh Green was the man that got through to get Steve DeBerg. And another timeout stops the clock with a minute 46 left. Shula's defense with a big play. Interstate battery power starts up strong and keeps on going. To find an interstate battery dealer near you, Maybe you can't avoid winter, but you can sail right through it in the Caribbean, Florida, or Hawaii. Let American Airlines take you where there's something special in the air. Well, the job of Marty Schottenheimer and Steve DeBerg and kicker Nick Lowry made a little tougher after the sack by the Miami defense. Football is now spotted back at the 27-yard line. I tell you, I still would run the ball if I was DeBerg or Coach Schottenheimer because that would force Miami to use their last time out and give you a shot with Lowry in the field goal. And those extra 30 seconds are going to be precious. This would be a 44-yard attempt now. One more sack takes him out of field goal range. This will be a running play. It is to McNair, and McNair takes it inside the 25 and back down to the 23-yard line. So now Nick Lowry, the 10-year veteran out of Dartmouth, on the field to try to attempt the go-ahead field goal. But first, Miami will stop the clock with a timeout, their final timeout. A minute 35 showing. They'll also give Nick Lowry a little time to think about this one. Sure, Marino's dangerous with any time left on the clock, but if Lowry makes this, a field goal would only tie it for Miami. It will be a 41-yard attempt. Lowry has missed nine field goals this year. The Berg will be the holder. The two coaches on the opposite sides of the field, they have a common link that goes way back. Don Shula. As the Baltimore Colts coach once picked Marty Schottenheimer in the fourth round of the 1965 draft. Although Marty passed up that chance to sign with the AFL Buffalo Bills. Now Nick Lowry will try a 41-yard field goal with a chance for the Chiefs to take the lead. Lowry from 41 yards has given Kansas City the lead with a minute 31 left. Very important to these Chiefs to win this game too regardless of the other playoff results. Uh, talking to Carl Peterson before the game and he said you know they've had a pretty good season. Didn't win as many games as they would have liked to win. But they're heading in the right direction. Carl Peterson certainly happy with the job that Coach Schottenheimer has done so far. And here you'll see Schottenheimer, what his reaction is to the good field. Well, he didn't get too excited about that, huh? I think he kind of expected that thing to be good. He told us he wished they had done better. He thought they would do better this season, but he has succeeded in raising the level of expectation for this team. And he says the players, for the most part, have responded very well. 27-24 Kansas City with a minute 31 left. One minute and 31 seconds. Miami out of timeouts, but no one better at milking the clock, running the two-minute offense than Dan Marino. Well, he's getting ready. He's got to have some help from his friends, though. Already today, we've seen Duper drop three passes. He's had five drops. Uh, 
all total by his Miami teammates. So these guys are going to have to catch the ball in this uh, situation. Sure, we know Marino can get it done, but <laughs> it takes the rest of the guys to do it as well. Marino has passed for over 300 yards. Here's the kick by Lowry. Taken in the end zone by Mark Logan, and Hampton tells him stay there. Sensational kick by Lowry. I mean, that's forcing the Dolphins to start at their own 20. That was just a big kick by uh, Nick Lowry. Well, remember, earlier in the game, Miami had a 92-yard drive for a touchdown. They'll have to go 80 yards here to take the lead or perhaps get into range for Stojanovic to attempt a tying field goal. 304 yards through the air for Dan Marino. And Stojanovic is going to have to get fairly close, too, Tom, because what wind there is is coming out of the direction that uh, the Dolphins are going into. Duper, Banks, Clayton, and Brown, along with Jensen. Receivers. Marino's pass to Clayton. He's got some room. He's at midfield. Out of bounds at the Kansas City 45-yard line. A 35-yard completion to Clayton. <laughs> Overtime, huh? These Dolphins want to win. They're going for the win. Clayton's coming from the right side across the field. Well, we won't see a replay this time because they have a hurry-up offense. Or, uh, moving the ball along here quickly now. But Clayton came from right to left across the field and just outran Burroughs that time for the big gainer. And that puts Clayton over 1,000 for the season. That's a Miami record. Fourth time over 1,000 yards receiving in a season. He had been tied with Duper. From the 45-yard line. Marino to the sideline and incomplete. Behind Duper, the intended receiver, with Kevin Ross covering. Meanwhile, on the sideline, Pete Stojanovic, the rookie from Indiana, keeping his leg warm, and maybe he'll get a chance to tie. You know, the little things we don't see or know about sometimes. Now, after this last pass play, Marino went over to Duper and talked to him about his pass pattern. Obviously, Marino thought Duper was breaking to the outside. And that's what we alluded to earlier. When Duper misses practice time, Marino, these guys aren't on the same page all the time, and it's hurt their passing attack. A minute 17 on that clock. Marino a time across the middle and broken up, intended for Clayton. J.C. Pearson hit him to knock the ball loose. This will be third down for Marino. J.C. Pearson, who actually was in pursuit on that last Clayton reception, is in excellent position this time. It looks a little close. Oh, that's just good defense by J.C. Nice going. He got his right arm in there and ripped the ball loose. There's J.C. Pearson, number 24. Twenty-seven, twenty-four, Kansas City. That clock is difficult to read. It's a minute eleven. Banks can't grab it. Pass was behind him, and it'll be fourth down. Yeah, that was good defense that time. Uh, Bill Cowers' uh, defensive strategy worked. They crossed the Dolphins up. Had that ball been on target, there's Coach Cower right now talking to Burroughs. Had that ball been on target, Coach Cower had his team in his own defense, and they would have stopped it for no game anyway. Fourth down. Huh? Fourth down. And remember this uh, Kansas City defense, as we mentioned earlier, without their perennial all-pro safety, Deron Cherry. Lloyd Burris has done a good job Filling in for him. Dan Marino on the verge of 4,000 yards passing, 3,997. He'd like to complete this one on fourth down. Across the middle, he's oh, dropped by Clayton. That's six drops. Dropped by Mark Clayton. He's even being consoled by the Kansas City defense. <laughs> yeah, but I wonder if they're really sincere. <laughs> it's Christmas time, Joe. They're not. I don't care. They're not that sincere. They just got a Christmas <laughs> gift from Mark Clayton, who turned to try to run with the ball and dropped it. Clayton's in the slot right in the middle of your screen. You'll see him turn to the outside. The ball's going to hit right in his midsection, in his bread basket, and he can't hold it. He'll remember that during the whole winter time. The whole offseason, Clayton will remember that. And Marino, well, that's just the way it's gone all season long, Dan. 
Clayton on the sideline of Miami has dropped a fourth down pass, and now Kansas City will just run out the clock. Miami with no timeouts left. As we think about uh, this game, there have been a lot of heroes for Kansas City. Steve DeBerg has had a big game. Christian Okoye right at 100 yards rushing and perhaps will take the NFL rushing championship. Barry Sanders giving him a run for his money. Sanders with three touchdowns today I think they ought to the try last game. I think they ought to try and run Okoye now, Tom. I think their rushing title is going to be so close. Uh, gee, I'd like to see him try to get some more yards. Well, Marty Schottenheimer is a no-nonsense coach, and he doesn't care anything about records. He wants this W, and he's going to get it. Marino and Clayton, who have combined so many times for spectacular plays. And a disconsolate Mark Clayton after dropping a fourth down reception right in his midsection. A bitter way to end the 1989 season as the Dolphins' chance for a playoff berth go down the drain with that drop pass. And the game comes to an end. Well, Joe, we've got to pick an MVP. What about... Uh, Christian Okoye, who carried 26 times for 97 yards and perhaps will be the NFL rushing champion. So Christian Okoye from Kansas City is our Budweiser most viable player. Budweiser will make a contribution to the United Way on behalf of all today's MVPs. NFL Live with the Budweiser NFL Report coming up next. Kansas City wins over Miami 27-24. Tom Hammond for Joe Namath saying, Merry Christmas, everybody. Beware of this guy. He's no Santa Claus. His name, Letterman. His show, Late Night. His guest this week, Paulie, Riser, Cliff. Watch out for him, only on NBC.